Alrighty then, it's podcast number 65 of the Stone Roadie Show and action. Well, looky here, looky here, look who we got back. It's the lovely Kathy Godsey. Welcome back. The lovely Kathy Godsey. This is your 12th appearance on the Stone Roadie Show. And the other day I said, Kathy Godsey, the occasional co host, and you straightened me out. You said, <laughs> me, I've done close to 20% of the Stone Roadie Show. <laughs> Let's get that straight. So we want to welcome you back with the lovely Miss Kathy Godsey. And we were going to do this yesterday and we had a power outage. I was sitting here. I had Savannah and Kathy Keeble sitting here and, and, uh, all ready to go. I was going to send Kathy a, 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 an invitation and I kept losing my, losing my signal. And, um, uh, and then she tried to call me and my phone was out and then, and then, yeah, the power went out. So, we went in, we were waiting for the power to come back on and we went into the living room and we were in there racing cars and we couldn't really race each other because we didn't have an internet connection. So we're doing, we were just kind of racing the train, same track. And then all of a sudden we had a, a, a lightning strike and it, and it knocked out the, uh, knocked out the PlayStation. So we had to quit that. So we kind of just piddled around here and, and left. But, we, uh, they were in town that, um, Savannah knows a, a band called Thunderstruck and they are a AC tri DC tribute band. And she knows the, some of the band guys in there. So she came, she, she made it a twofer. She come over here and she was there the night before to see them, I guess over in the Indiana area. And then they came over here and they played the Kent, the outpost at Kent state last night and so we went over there about seven o'clock and uh we walked in and every and they went out and were sitting out in the in the crowd and i goes well why are we sitting out here in the crowd I, we got backstage passes i'm going backstage and they were kind of <laughs> looking at me you know so i just get up and i said i know where the dressing rooms are they're back there so i went back and just walked in the dressing room and just uh, uh, um, um, identified myself and they knew I was coming, you know, uh, Savannah had told them that one of the guys that uh, toured with Leonard Skinner was coming and that, that I had actually, uh, done a bunch of shows with, um, ACDC and actually, I actually partied one time with Bon Scott. He found out I was with Journey and he found out I would, had been with Leonard Skinner and he goes, can you drink like your buddy Ronnie? And I said, well, I never had any problems. So we, we got together one night. And I, unfortunately, I can't tell you much about that night. I kind of had a blackout after being with him that night. But yeah, I, I imagine we had a good time. But I want to tell you what, I had one heck of a time last night with those guys with Thunderstruck. Oh my God, what a tribute band. I could not believe it. I mean, I was, I, Savannah said, come with me right up front and we'll, and we'll be, you know, right up front, you know, and I go, okay, whatever, you know, no problem. So I, uh, we were standing right up front and I stood there for two hours and mm -hmm. got my mind blown. Those guys were so good and they started and they didn't take a breath for two hours. And I was, I was mesmerized. Those guys, I swear to God, I, it was like one of the best concerts I've ever been to in my life. And it was wow. the outpost and, and there wasn't a hundred people there. And what was cool is I went backstage and, and, and when they started talking about the crowd the night before, they said, that they said there was like 13 people there and they were, they, then they were talking about how, ex, how good the show was and how well they played 
and how, and, and how proud of their self they were that, for playing so well. And there were only 13 people in the crowd. And it was like, it was like, whoa, man. It was like, you know, Ronnie used to say, it don't no matter now how many people out there, just, you know, put on the best show you can because you never know who's going to be out there. And, and those guys, man, I, every, each and every one of those guys, as far as, uh, if you get rate them from one to 10 for, for their contribution of, 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 uh, of, of putting on a, a, a premium ACDC show, every single one of those guys get an 11. That's my, great. I mean, they were, I turned, Jeff was there with, with us, and I turned around at Jeff, I goes, Jeff, you remember what I said about Ronnie used, used to say when, about well, you can tell a good song if a stripper can date, I got this microphone way out here. Could you hear me all that time? Yeah, I could hear you fine, but I can hear you better now. That's fine. Oh, I can hear okay. you. No, I can hear all you. Right. Fine. I'm sorry. I wasn't even thinking. I don't even have my dog on my earplugs plugged in here. I can't even hear myself. What the well, heck, Craig? Okay. This is podcast hey. 65. You're supposed to know what you're doing by now. Good hey, we're not professional. Oh, I can hear. I can hear myself. But okay, where was I? But anyways, yeah, I was back there and I went back there and they were talking about how uh, how good the show was the night before and there were very little people there and then and then and then they brought the promoter brought in like six cheeseburgers and and these guys were like, "Oh my god, these are so good. Oh my god, these are so good." And and it was like they did they barely had water to drink and and you know, I got with Leonard Skinner before um, we started getting a lot of the the extra things that bands get in the dressing room and stuff. And they go, yeah. I goes, you guys don't have much of a writer, do you? And they go, well, there's a lot on the writer, but no, not normally not here. But uh, yeah, I, it, that was it was really cool, you know. I guess, but you know, they weren't. I, I said, well, well, this is a lot different than being in ACDC's dressing room before the show. I said, Bon Scott. <laughs> drunk by now you know <laughs> it, but it, those guys were so those so so good man the guy the the guy that i can't remember their names i'm sorry but the the guy that that, that played uh bon scott or or uh the, uh, brian J jones and man he was he he was spot on all those guys were spot on i told him i wanted to be on the stone roadie show matter of fact the drummer Oh my God, I know what it's like to be a drummer. Drummers hardly get any recognition at all in the band. I mean, this this drummer and this bass player, they were they were in the pocket all night long. I mean, it was just, and man, that guy was just, I said, God dang, dude, I know what, it, how it's, what it's like to play drums. I, I've tried to play for a couple of songs and I can already do it, man. And he, they just, they just powered it out for two hours. It was, it was incredible, but yeah, I told, I told him, I said, man, I mean, there were no, there were no lights, you know, I mean, they were just, it was a bar and, and from where I was standing, it was like record, man. Those guys were so rehearsed and it was just like, and they enjoyed their self. And I, the whole time I was there, I was going, this is what Leonard Skinner needs as a tribute band. Not yeah. dissing the, the 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 band that's out there now. I love Ricky. I love love Johnny. But but what I understand, Ricky was kind of putting it up for a vote whether he should uh, continue this, and and so is Johnny. And you know, the, I I admire what they do. They're they're they do a, a admirable job at what they do. But man, there's it just something about when kids that young yeah. get together and show their appreciation for in this case it was acdc and they just love the music and they're not making any money at it that's 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 you know and they probably may never will unless things change unless they would get a gig in las vegas and get a 
could get a permanent gig as the house band for the best ACTC band there is yeah. out there, which I think they are, you know, but you know, in, in my opinion, that's what, I mean, there's God, I know 10 Leonard Skinner tribute bands and, and one of my best friends, Cherokee Mike, he just passed away here a couple years ago. He was the lead singer in, in Vicious Cycle. And he's a, he was a tribute Leonard Skinner tribute band, you know, from around here. And, and, and there were, there were, there, there, there's a few others. I'm not going to mention any names because I'll leave somebody out, but man, there, there's, there's not a Leonard Skinner tribute band out there that give, give the performance as as this ACDC tribute band did for ACDC I was totally blown away and uh, man it would be so cool if you know that we could have one like that with Leonard Skinner but with a bunch of young uh, a new you know new you know take the you know take the torch and you know carry on with the torch you know but you know it's it's not profitable I mean because uh, you know, if you don't write, you're not going to make any money and just going out there and playing tribute music. It's, it's great for the, for the, for the, for, to, for, for remembrance of, of the tribute thing. But, uh, uh, you know, at this point, nobody's going to make any money doing that, but I just want to give my kudos to those guys, those guys, those really guys, those guys really did an amazing job. And I told them too, and, you know, and they were, that you know i was very impressed but uh enough about that and my experience last night and then then we had the power outage so uh yeah we had a we had a a, a, a whole nother arrangement set up for yesterday so i guess we'll kind of maybe move along to what we were going to do yesterday and and uh <laughs> Take it away, Kathy, and I'm going to grab this phone here. Okay. This always happens right in the middle of a podcast. So this is the Sunday edition of the Saturday night special that we were supposed to have last night. And it's funny because of a couple of uh, right friends who re routinely yeah. reach out to me and they say, when are you going to do a Saturday well, night special? So One of I'll them was Tony know. Mays. He's a new <laughs> friend on Facebook. And I wrote okay. to him yesterday and I said, we're going to be planning to do a Saturday night special. And I told a couple of other people that always ask. But anyway, Tony went and put a nice post on his Facebook page and he tagged Craig and me. And he said, you know, they're doing this special. Everybody should watch it. Everybody should subscribe. Check it out. And then I talked to you, Craig, and you said, well, I'm having a power uh, internet issue. So I texted Tony and I said, you better revise that. I don't know if it's going to go through. <laughs> but a lot of people are very happy, are going, are going to be watching this tonight and very happy about that we're doing this Sunday edition of their Saturday night special. So I'm so happy to be here again. We were here a couple, uh, a couple of weeks ago. I have been in contact with um, George Festo and Mikey Lockout. So they're still interested in doing a podcast a Saturday night special. I told them whenever they're ready, let me know and we'll be ready for them. They have some cool stories to tell. So uh, about a week or so ago, Griff put an uh, interesting um, little thing on his, a um, little blurb on his Facebook. And he said, what do you guys love about my friend Craig Reed? And uh, it, it just the amount of of uh, feedback. It's kind of like a roast, but everything's positive. Nothing's negative. So it's not a roast to you, Craig, but someday we'll do a roast to you. <laughs> but I'm going to oh, read. Would, that would be easy. I can add a few. <laughs> few of those. I don't mind. I know. I could, I, I'd, be... I, I'd, I'd steal the pennies off a dead man's oh. eyeballs. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> that is true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can talk about that a little bit too. But um, you know, before we start talking about the things that people love about you, did you want to mention something about Gary and uh, Leon and you know the way they live their lives? And you were talking to me about the other day about how you know they kind of lived a tough life and uh, as compared to Leon, I mean um, Artemis and Ricky. Did you want to just talk a little bit about that? 
Well, yeah, just the fact that, you know, it's, um, you know, Ricky, you know, Ricky, he's, you know, thinking about hanging us up as far as uh, continuing as the Leonard, the Leonard Skinner thing. But <clears throat> you notice Ricky, he's older than all of us, you know, and, 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 um, and Artemis, he's older than all of the, the guys that have passed away, you know, except for Ronnie, I guess. But, uh, you know, basically, you know, I mean, I hate to say it like this, but basically Gary and Billy and Leon and, 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 and Alan, you know, they basically all killed themselves. You know, I mean, they just basically just, partied and I was there with them. I mean, I'm, I'm, it's a wonder I'm not dead too, but you know, I, I retired back in 2006. So that was quite a few years ago and I still had problems, you know, but you know, I was trying to deal with my, my, my demons back there and then and trying to get clean. But, uh, I guess it finally took me getting off the road to do it. But, um, those guys, I don't know. They just kind of weren't able to to do it up until their death or, or or up until they got so sick they couldn't do it you know but leon i mean leon and billy and and uh, and and everybody affiliated with this band just you know kind of just abused their bodies you know and it's you know except for ricky you know ricky he's he's still older than older than me and he's up there running around like some kid you know of course he wasn't in that plane and got all mangled and up and stuff either. But, you know, yeah. I'm sure he's had some issues. And, you know, and, and Artemis, you know, he never, you know, he smoked pot and stuff. But he never, you know, really drank a bunch, you know. So a couple of times he would drink a little bit or whatever. And, but he never got into any, any real serious cocaine issues or anything like that. So, you know, yeah. both of those guys are still alive. And. You know, it's a pretty good reason for that. They didn't get involved in all that drug stuff. And, you know, you know, I've been trying to get, I'm on Facebook all the time trying to get people to think about being healthier, you know. And, uh, you know, I get a lot, a lot of feedback on it. You know, even this thing with the, this, this eBay thing that I'm doing now, I'm getting so much slack over, you know, people commented, Oh, that Craig Reed, he's a dirty SOB. Have you heard about the way he talks to, about fat people? You know, <laughs> I got a lot of people that don't like me because of the way I talk about uh, uh, obesity and, uh, and people being overweight, being a problem, you know, and, and uh, lo and behold, it is a problem, you know, and people, you know, want to act like I'm some kind of a bad guy because because I'm trying to bring this obesity epidemic situation to a head. But, you know, they just want to bury it. You know, I mean, I'm sorry to say it, man, but if if you're extremely overweight, in my opinion, you don't you don't have a very good opinion of yourself. You know, mm -hmm. and these people out there that are calling me this and that and the other thing, I look, I see pictures of them and I go, you know, you think, you really think I care what you think about me? You don't think very much of yourself. You know, I mean, look at yourself. I mean, what, but you know, enough about that, you know, anyways. Uh, so that's my health tips of, for the day, I guess. But, uh, nice. you know. We, we got, we, we passed a, a thousand and before, and now when I put one of these things out, I got to go through a big long thing about how I want to advertise on this. And, and I haven't seen any advertisements on the Stone Roadie Show and people, people have told me that they're, they're seeing some, but when I filled out the paperwork for this, I make those advertisements skippable and I made them so they go in the front. And then the, on the back, and I didn't put any in the middle. And in the middle, it's kind of where, where you kind of make your money on on the uh, on the on your podcast. And the, and and from what I understand, you, you're supposed to click it, and make it at least forty five seconds long. And you know, I don't want I don't want to put a forty five second commercial in the middle of the podcast. So. I'm not going to do it here right away, but, you know, later on down the road, you know, they're skippable and, you know, we're trying to, 
we're trying to raise, we're trying to make this a podcast um, pop very, very, very popular because we want to get those subscriptions up. And I don't want to put on here where and and ask people for donations for money to keep this thing, this podcast rolling. I'm not going to do that. I'd like to make it so that we get enough subscriptions so that YouTube actually uh, pays us to, to do this. And then, like we've said from the beginning, you know, Griff and I really didn't start doing this to make any money for ourselves. But if it ever did to come to the point where we, we started making money off this, we're going to give it to the four people that I know who need it the most at this point. We're going to start with, which yeah. is Leslie Hawkins and and Paul Welsh and Mark Howard and and Mark Frank. Those those guys, as far as I know, are still dealing with pretty bad uh, medical issues and expenses and stuff. And I and I said I'm not gonna talk about any of this until Gary's gone because I didn't want to lay this on Gary uh, because you know this was all we were on that airplane crash. The management should have had at least a million dollars worth of insurance for everybody on that plane, and they didn't. You know, there was like a hundred, a million and a half dollars for for twenty six people. You know, and you know, I don't know. In, in my opinion, you know, it, Ronnie says he wanted to be the manager of this band. Well. He should have, you know, he wouldn't have been a very good manager either because they didn't have no insurance. They weren't thinking about the whole, the big picture. What if this plane crashes and, you know, and people get hurt, you know, and they're, they're going to have to suffer for the rest of their lives because we didn't have proper insurance on it, you know? And I don't know if, if I'd have been in that band, I think I would have donated some of the proceeds over the last. 35 years of uh, of being the tribute band to try to help some of these people that have are still suffering you know luckily i didn't get hurt that bad i was i was back on the road working the a plane crash was in october i was living in new york city the next, in february of 78 just a few months later and i kind of never stopped i mean not to say that I don't, I'm not suffering with injuries now. God, last night at that show, I, after you know being there six hours, my age was starting to show. But of course, those six beers didn't help. <laughs> help much. I, I was actually went up. I told the drummer, I said, I "Me, mean, dude, I want to be your drum roadie." So I went up and I was trying to help him pack up his drums, and I was up there and 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 and. Um, and je- and automotive was i said come up here and film me being a roadie you know and i was up there and i and uh i was I about fell down one time fell over some cords and i, I said man I, I, you know thanks I, i'm just gonna get out of here and get out of your guy <laughs> I'm, I'm i just wanted to amuse myself by coming up here and acting like I <laughs> roadie. that's and way you were you were saying those guys don't even have a roadie, right? They just do oh, everything. Oh, man, else. they're doing it all by themselves. You know, oh, doing poor guys. Themselves. Yeah, well, I hope I, the fact that you're mentioning them and, you know, giving them a shout out, maybe they'll, you know, get some more recognition and maybe something good will come oh, out. Oh, I'm going to tell you what, yeah. anybody that owns any kind of place, like, you know, facility that can, can afford them, I don't think they cost much, you know, to bring in, but. I'm going to tell you what, you go to see those guys. If you like ACDC, you will not be disappointed. Oh my God. Those guys are so good. I mean, they just, it's incredible. It's, that's just actually, it, it kind of reminded me of some of the old videos of, of when ACDC was very, very, very young back in England playing those little small gigs they did, you know, and yeah. it was, it was just, you know, it was just so cool watching them. I mean, I was just floored. I mean, you know, like Ronnie said, man, he used to say, you know, if a stripper can't dance to it, it ain't a good song. And I turned around on the chat <laughs> by the automotive. I goes, man, a stripper wouldn't have any problem dancing to any <laughs> of this stuff. And I, and he and he got out his camera and he 
feel me to say that again. <laughs> I said, <laughs> we wouldn't have any problem dancing this stuff, you know. <laughs> I want I to see this footage. Gonna, <laughs> yeah, he, he's going to edit it out. And we'll we'll have yeah. that, that dumb and yeah. so well, so where does this band uh, originate? Are they from the, the Indiana You know area? what? I looked on the business card, and it really doesn't say. It said Louisville, so I'm I'm not sure. Oh. But uh, Savannah and them are on the Indiana area, and, and I, oh. I, I assume they're somewhere in, in that area there. Because out here in New Jersey, we have the Stone Pony. That's a great rock club. And if they can get a gig there, you know, that's a, it's a great club. So, um, yeah, well, maybe yeah, you're helping them out. The, by opening, them the opening band was a was a, a Foo Fighter tribute mm -hmm. band, and and they were good. But I'm not really a Foo Fighter, uh, yeah, fan or whatever. But uh, my son Chad, I told Chad, he goes, I didn't know you liked ACDC. <laughs> and I, I, I goes, oh man, God, I've you know I've probably did forty shows with ACDC. Because they yeah. they opened up for Skinner and then uh, and, and then Journey we opened up for uh, for ACDC in in England and Europe and then when we came here they opened up for us so yeah I've done probably at least forty shows with ACDC yeah, yeah. So I've I'm saw the really... original band and then I saw them and I I told them I goes. I'm not sure that I didn't ever see a, a, a ACDC put on that good of a show. I swear to God, they were unbelievable. That's great. That's yeah. great. Yeah. And you don't have to be necessarily a fan of like, I'm not really a, uh, consider myself a fan of ACDC, but you can't deny the songs and the talent like Hell's Bells. When I hear that on the radio, I love it. I mean, they're just, they're an amazing band. So I'm really oh, glad man, that you had a great time. They were incredible. That, it was and just, for two out. hours, it was just, Bam, 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 bam. I mean, it was, God, when are they going to stop? These guys are animals. My God. <laughs> right. I told so them they were animals. They didn't know how to, I, I, exactly. <laughs> I go, you guys are animals, man. God. <laughs> you made their night by being there, Craig. That's great. Well, That's you great. know, I didn't know how much my opinion mattered, but man, I'm going to tell you, they were, they were rocking, you know, they really were. Great. Well, I'm glad you, uh, you had a good time and you had a big night out. You've had a lot of big events and things going on, right? You drove to Jacksonville, came back and that was a big gig. That gig at Whitey's, you know, I was saying, we're talking about it on Facebook. You guys have to do that annually or something because I'm coming down for the next one. That uh, that gets good all the Jackson the old Jacksonville guys. I want to be there next time. So <laughs> yeah, what would be cool? Maybe we could do a thing and take a vote on when people would like to do one annually. Yeah. And, you know, people say, well, we don't want to do it. We wouldn't want to do it in the middle of summer. It's too hot, you know. And and uh, when we did it down there here last week, it was a little chilly. I went to Jacksonville. I mm -hmm. took shorts and short sleeve shirts and shorts and and luckily I had two coats with me. I bo I wore both of them. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll have to definitely talk about that because a lot of people are interested. I'm definitely I'm going to the next one. Definitely. But yeah, but I I, I was saying, you know, it'd be cool next year. We know we did this one for Gary. Mm -hmm. I think next year we could do we could do a memorial for Ronnie. And then the year after that, we could do a memorial for Alan and then, mm -hmm. and then so on and so forth, you know, and just have one every year until, until I'm not here anymore. <laughs> or maybe every six months. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, Biannually. I, don't, I don't think I could afford to come down there every six months. That last my, Gary's trip down there, I got a $400 ticket on the way back. <laughs> yeah, I'm not surprised. Years. Why am I not surprised that you got a speeding ticket? Well, you know, I, I, maybe I was warned not to go 95 through Georgia, but I didn't listen. <laughs> well, I didn't yeah. really know I was, I didn't, I, you know, I've just, all of a sudden I was up to 95 and I just thought I was moving along with traffic. And that's what I told the cop. And he goes, no, you were a little faster than traffic. But my, <laughs> well, I got, I got that escort fuzz buster. I mean, you've seen it in my car and it's gone. Yeah. Yeah, I hit my brakes, and 
He goes, oh, yeah, yeah it's quite went, annoying. You went from 95 to 75 real quick. And I went, I the brakes, and yeah, it, was, it wasn't fast enough. Yeah, once they hit you with radar, they got you. I still think if you had said, look, you know what, I'm coming back for my friend's funeral <laughs> Gary, i think he would have let you off I oh really yeah think. oh you're coming back from gary rostenton's funeral all you do a car podcast called the stone roadie show what do you got that's there okay. in the car <laughs> no that's okay i think he, he would have given he's, you he's the had his head right inside my car <laughs> really? really and you still yeah, got away <laughs> i was whatever you say sir <laughs> <laughs> well you know that was a, that was a that was a big drive for you, and I'm glad you only got. I'm surprised you only got one ticket for that uh, whole trip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, usually I get have I have somebody in front of me that I I use as a a decoy, and I I tail them by a couple hundred yards. But I was not thinking, and <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they say getting back in the big truck or something, and that'll block uh, the uh, radar. Well, I usually just. Fu- wait till somebody goes flying by me and the and then I just kind of tail them you know but I was kind of blazing the trail on my I like I said I thought I was just keeping up with traffic but you know I guess I was going a little faster than I thought I was I was concerned about you because you didn't leave until what eight ten o'clock at night or something like that that was a like a 12 no, hour down, down Florida Florida I left at 5 30 I try I like to travel at night because you know I watch TV while I'm driving and I, I can't really see the TV at day, in the daytime so <laughs> you're the only one I know who, who stocks up for videos when you drive I took 23 <laughs> d- DVDs with me and I watched them all the way down there <laughs> No, I was referring to when you left to go da- to go there. You called me around ten o'clock. Oh and yeah, you said yeah, I'm yeah, Fifteen yeah, yeah. miles away from my house. I was like, well, I thought you were leaving earlier. And then Automotive said he was going to go, and I went. You know, I don't know the situation down there. You know, I I don't know. You know, if I'll even be able to get, in. I don't want you to just go yeah. down there to go to Whitey's. I said. Tell you truth, I've never even been in Whitey's, you know, so I don't know what kind of a place it is or nothing. I just, you know, that's a long way to go down there. Yeah, but, yeah. But well, heck, I could, I could have just rode with him down there and just, just slept the whole way. <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. And it's funny because Jeff uh, Auto texted me and he said, he said, get your butt down to Whitey's, and I said, I have to work. I'm a teacher. <laughs> And then I called him and I said, why don't you go with Craig? What I mentioned, I suggested that you go with him. And he said, don't tell him I'm coming down. So I didn't want to tell you. He said he was just driving down. And he made it. It was a, it was a pretty uh, challenging trip, though. He hit a lot of bad weather. Well, traffic, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was staying with Chad and, you know, right. and, you know and everything. And so. But you were, uh, you were jazzed up on coffee beans by the time you got oh there. You couldn't God, even sleep. Yeah. <laughs> I got down there. The only thing I'd eaten was coffee beans. I was, got down there. Yeah, I, was, I was pretty jacked up. And then, you know, I, that was Saturday and then, and then Sunday. And then, and then I had to get up really early the next mor- morning. The funeral was at noon and Chad lives at the beach. And that's like a, an hour from the funeral home. And uh, yeah, it all worked out pretty well, though. That's good. I'm glad you made it back safe, and you know, I'm, yeah, I'm sure weather, Gary was I'm glad that you were there. Weather, the weather, because it had rained the night before, really bad and stuff, and so it was it was good that you know it had stopped raining during the funeral and everything. That was nice. Mm-hmm. It was real nice, real nice ceremony. It was, uh, you know, very touching. You know, yeah. a lot of Gary had a lot of lot of people oh my god yeah gary would have been so oh what's the word um (laughs) proud of you know of er everything the way things went you know and and like i said before gary looked good i mean i when i went up to look at gary i i'm gonna be redundant and say this again but I didn't know what I was going to react to this, you know? I mean, Gary and me were really close. And when I walked up there, I went, 
what would Alan say if Alan was still alive? How would he react toward this? You know, and God, I looked in at Gary and he's lay, laying there and he looked like he was asleep and he was having a dream and he was happy. Like he was almost smiling. I looked at him and went, dang, Gary, for being dead, you look good, buddy, you know? <laughs> And, you know, I did, all I did was remember what he said about Leon when he walked up and, to, and looked at Leon. He goes, who the hell is that? Because they'd cut Leon's hair and they'd cut his beard and it didn't look like Leon. And I knew Gary would, you know, he'd want to look good. You know, I know Gary. He'd wanna, he wouldn't want to look bad, you know. He'd want to look good and he'd look good, you know. Yeah. So anybody that thinks I'm disrespectable for saying damn Gary for being dead you look good man so I'm sure out of everybody that said something to him I'm sure that he liked what I said the best you know you know because yeah. he, oh, he looked good man you know if, if I was there I'd want to look good I wouldn't want to look bad you know so I told mm -hmm. him man you look good you know and um yeah and as far as that brochure, I'm selling them on eBay. I'm sure he's looking down, thinking, "I, I hope I, I hope he gets five thousand dollars for that, man. That, <laughs> that, that'd be a Guinness Book of World Record, you know, or, or something for, for the most expensive funeral brochure that ever sold. I'm sure he'd like to hold that record, you know. And I'm sure, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, people said I was disrespecting the name of Leonard Skinner by doing that. I. I don't know how I'm doing that, you know, and you know, this podcast, people love this thing. I, you know, I, I'm all I'm doing, you know, I'm, there's a, there's a lot of stuff I can't remember. And I was a roadie and this and that and the other thing, but you know, I know people, things, people, other people don't know, you know, I mean, it's flat out the truth. And if somebody's going to do this, I mean, I, I, I turned down a thing last night. Some guy wanted me to do a Gary Washington spe uh, special last night on a on another show. I forget the name of it, but I told him, I said, man, I'm, I'm going to go to this ACDC concert. But you know, <laughs> I'm gonna, I, 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 might, I might, you know, I'll do one later or if you want or whatever. But, uh, you know, I do everything I can to build on the legacy of this band and you know, and I always said, I'm not going to say, really say anything bad. I said, but after Gary dies, I might, I might open up a little more and say some things I wouldn't say while Gary is alive, but I can't really think of anything that I'm going to add. You know, like I said before, the only thing I would really talk about that I wouldn't want to talk about while Gary was still alive was feeling responsible for people suffering still suffering uh, and having to pay out of their own pocket stuff that should have been taken care of by band management and insurance and stuff like that and you know if there's any way possible i'd love to you know there's podcasts that make a lot of money and if you know i i know i'm not very good at this but you know i'm I'd, I'd really like to get better at it so people watch it and we get a lot of subscriptions and you know i could i could give everybody a hundred grand or so you know and help yeah. them out you know i mean yeah you know I, I i'd like that i'm sure gary would like that but you know whatever i'm not begging anybody for anything you know i just you know we just i'm not gonna add you know i'm just gonna say if you if you you know when you see these commercials you know just that you're going to see from now on just kind of kind of deal with it and click skip or whatever but you know and if we're going to make any any money off this off of ebay and give it to the subscribers we're going to have to deal with a little bit of um, commercialism <laughs> you know so yeah yeah you know. so we got a whole bunch of other questions though don't we yeah, we have questions. We have the uh, the responses. So Griff sent out a little uh, thing on his a little um, thing on his uh, Facebook last week, and he said, "What do you love about my friend Craig Reed?" So he asked me. He texted me yesterday, and he said, "Would you mind covering those questions on the podcast?" I said, "I'd be honored." 
Because, you know, uh, your friend, I think Cousin Feigl, he said, I'm the queen of the questions. I think that was Cecil. Thank you, Cousin Feigl. <laughs> so I'm so honored to be able to ask these questions. And that, I mean, to answer, um, to, I'm sorry, to read the responses that people have uh, written on Facebook with regard to what they love about Craig Reed. Here you go. Ready, Craig? <laughs> okay. Guy Wharton. Craig is always cheerful and likable, always positive. I enjoy my conversations with Craig. I guess you talked to him on the phone. Trudy Smith. I love to read his stories and how much of a hoot he is when I speak to him. So I guess oh, she calls me. She calls me every few days. Here, she Trudy. Does. <laughs> and you yes, always have so time good. for them because I remember ha having stayed at your house several times. The phone's always ringing all day long. The phone's ringing and it's always people and you talk to them and then I, you hang up and I say, who are we talking to? I don't know. I, I don't, I don't, <laughs> but you're so, you're so nice. And you know, you give them your time. And the very first time I contacted you, I remember I, try to message you through messenger and you said call me and i called you and i was a little nervous but it was like we were best friends so it was fun <laughs> okay chris waldron what you see is what you get with craig like him or not he is his own man and will tell you like it is Teresa gross i like craig's straight up honesty and he jokes lightheartedly about his life, even after surviving a plane crash. I believe he is down to earth as he knows most people rather have the truth and fabricate the way it is. I love his, his honesty and sense of humor. Okay, you're going to feel good by the time I'm done with this list. <laughs> <laughs> Keith Swick. He was right in the mix with the greatest band ever and his stories are great. Jimmy Withers. Oh, you're going to like this one. Jimmy Withers says he's less competition for me at getting fat girls. <laughs> that Jimmy Withers down there at, at, at Whitey's, he, he, he went around and got every big fat girl he could and brought him up and had a picture taken with me. <laughs> <laughs> I saw him. I saw hilarious. him. I got to meet him. I got to meet Jimmy Withers. I was hugging on him and stuff. <laughs> oh, I know. I got to meet him. Oh. Okay, Monty Fisher. I greatly appreciate the fact that he has no bones to pick with anyone. He got along with all the members like a real teammate would. Also a no bullshit straight shooter. That's true. That's what a lot of people say. Oh, my buddy, Joey Edwards. Joey. <laughs> he says, who couldn't love that fugger? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody is a fugger. I love him. I love him. Shari Padula. Hi, Shari. Craig is an open book of skin formation, so modest about it and willing to share his stories and answer our questions. I was kind of nervous to call him, but he was just so easy to talk to. Craig is one of a kind. He's the best. Danny Barron. I love that he cares about giving the Skinner fans his knowledge and insight about the band. I've been waiting for almost 50 years to hear stories about my favorite band. And this is where they are on this, your podcast. Uh, Les Evie, he's loyal to those he cares about. And that is true. You, you were definitely loyal to your friends and the people that you care about. Miles Nye, you are the real deal. Jennifer Wells, I love hearing his stories. And I just had the pleasure of meeting him. Do you recall reading, uh, meeting Jennifer Wells recently? Um, was she at the, uh, at the, uh, the whiteys gathering do you know i yeah, I, you know. I i remember meeting somebody named jennifer yeah but i i can't i can't tell you all right well that's okay <laughs> um I, mean, I signed i signed 150 of those but i had a big stack of those stone roadie business cards i was yeah. sitting there signing them giving them oh that was very generous of you. That's very generous. Thank you. I'm number six. I got number six. <laughs> um, thanks to you, Griff. Thanks to you, Griff. And uh, for getting that signature on my book. Craig is just the coolest guy. I never miss an episode of the Stone Roadie. Keep up the good work, guys. We fans are incredibly grateful. Okay, William Moore. I love his honesty and stories from the road. 
David Selders. Oh, I love David. He's another regular nice guy. I love his laugh. Sometimes mischievous. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky Connor says, I love Craig because he's so down to earth. Joe Muller, Craig Reed is a Yankee from Ohio. I am also. He's a survivor and he can joke about being brain damaged as I also am. So I can relate <laughs> to that and the problems that come with it. But he doesn't let that injury stop him from trying his best to recall names, places, and events. Craig volunteers his time to entertain us. Long live Craig and Griff, and may this good Lord bless the Stone Roadie Show. That's wonderful. Very well said. Okay. I'm actually, I'm actually starting to have fun with this. You know, it's um, yeah, yeah. I know you've brought a lot of people. How many viewers have you said have watched in the past twenty eight days? How many viewers? Uh, they, they, there were ten thousand views in twenty eight days. Oh my goodness! Yeah, that's amazing. That's crazy. amazing. Yep. Okay, Rick, Rich, Rick, I'm sorry, Rick Frisch, difficult name. He uh, responds to Joe Muller, all of that and above. And I love how he always chuckles to himself before he answers his questions from folks. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like Mick Murphy and Cuckoo's Nest. <laughs> oh, my favorite movie, The Cuckoo's Nest. One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. And yeah. the jerk are my two favorite movies. Yeah, and uh, Once Upon a Time and, in Hollywood, right? I got you into that. The, and I still watch the Real McCoys every day, just like <laughs> Gary loved the Real McCoys. You know? Really? A lot of people know he liked Andy, but yeah, he he loved the Real McCoys, and I still watch the Real McCoys every day. <laughs> oh, and the, yeah, Andy Griffith's show. I know yeah, that's yeah. a great show. Okay, um, so that was Rick Frisch, and he says uh, he's an uh, it's an honest man's trait for sure. And then S. J. Good, C Craig is such a funny man, funny guy. I'm sorry, man. I love these as I get much needed laughs. I love this podcast. Uh, Lori Shoemaker, I hear her a lot. She's always yeah, I, I do she too. Yeah, she's always commenting on stuff. Yeah. She wanted you to pick her up on the way to Jacksonville. She said, pick me up and take me with you. <laughs> I, I think she'd change her mind after she got in the car with me. Not a lot of people like to get in the car with me and ride. And, and when people get in the car with me, they, I said, I say, you didn't tell me we were going to, you were going to scream every time we almost wrecked. <laughs> <laughs> I think you can relate to that. <laughs> yeah, because I'm always grabbing onto the door. Like, are you okay? No. <laughs> say, I'm like, I'm a mother. You're saying, I have three daughters. You're saying, Greg, why are we in such a hurry? <laughs> <laughs> Can't you just stay behind that car? <laughs> I know. You were, that one time you picked me up and we were driving to get to that restaurant. <laughs> oh god i'm yeah. serving at nine o'clock you oh, were yeah. still like we walked in there are you still serving dinner he goes buddy it's better to get here alive <laughs> we served dinner until 11 o'clock <laughs> try to find a japanese restaurant open after 9 p.m <laughs> uh. So, um, all right, so Lori Shoemaker says he tells it like it is. Also, I love the great memories, the parts he can remember from being stoned, LOL. <laughs> I can't wait to meet you someday, Craig Reed. You know, I think when you guys have the next Whitey's gathering, I think it's just going to be through the roof because everybody's going to go down there. Everybody's going to want to be there for part of it. Oh, yeah, some guy some guy get, got in my case because he said we didn't give him enough time. He, that was very disrespectful <laughs> that you, had, you didn't give me enough time to plan for that, you know. So. Oh, well, so, you know. I don't think Gary planned his passing. So. <laughs> I didn't find out the, what was going to happen until Thursday, and we had to be down there Monday morning, so we didn't have much time. And then some people didn't want us to have it at Whitey's at all. They thought that was disrespectful that we would do something like that. But uh, turned out to be very good. You know, it turned out, you know, a lot of people went there. And, you know, the thing was over at three o'clock and 
after that they really didn't have anything to go to do and my god that that celebration of life for at whitey's for gary rossington man oh man that was i'm sure gary loved it i mean i'm you know i'm sure he did kathy keeble did you see the picture did you she took a picture i swear to god it's eerie they were standing at ronnie's grave and they took and they took a picture and it's like there's there's an image coming up out of the grave where it looks like ronnie's there what? <laughs> yeah it's what really is- weird uh, yeah, it's really weird. It's a, it's, yeah, <laughs> you have to wow. see. Wow, I didn't see. I have to and check her uh, her Facebook page. Wow, I that's. Didn't think she's posted it. It's very wow. strange. And then somebody took it, and then they noticed it, and they went, "That's weird." And then somebody said, "Ronnie, if that's you, show yourself again." And then right in front of her, that image comes up again. It's it's weird. Is that <laughs> something. And it's you guys weird. went over to you went over to Alan's. Uh, we what? went to well we went to all the grave sites yeah and we were down yeah. there we went to the hell house and we went to alan's grave and we went to ronnie's and you know went to all of them there's something uh going on i saw one of your buddies posted something about the marker the hell house marker they want to take it down or something like well, that the guy, yeah the guy that bought that property died and now i guess like we did, we we came in, but you know, because he's got it right there where this is where Ronnie Van Zant's boat dock was. I guess, you know, I guess people go there and visit, it, and I guess it's Aww. some people are complaining because they don't want people going through their neighborhood or or whatever. It's really cool back in there. All the all the names of the streets are they kind of named in with something to do with Leonard Skinner. And it's like um, Tuesday's Gone intersects with- uh, Oh, that's uh, lovely. Uh, with- um, uh, uh, <laughs> Brickyard with, Road? There must um, be a Brickyard train, Road, right? Uh, tra- uh, tra- um, yeah, train you well. Tra- Tuesday's gone and train roll on. You know. Oh, how it, nice! Tuesday's gone and it runs right into where there's a train. Train roll on. Yeah, yeah. It's re- they they got a kind of like a kids uh, playground and they, there's a like a train there and it's like Tuesday's gone intersects with trains roll on. It's really oh, cool. that's really no- that's really nice that they I, did that. I, yeah, I would have from when I was out there. You know. 50 years ago when the hell house was there we went in the front gate but it was really even hard to find where the dock the boat dock was unless you know where you're at but but yeah if you it's right right back there where tuesday's gone and the train is it's about another 100 yards up the up the road on the left that's where that boat dock is (laughs) <laughs> so how large is that sign that is uh, in question they want it's, to remove um, it? two feet square or something like that oh. you know, I mean, it's not square but it's basically about two feet each way oh wow well it's nice it's you know a bronze thing yeah i took pictures of all of it yeah okay yeah i saw i saw a picture of it well i mean worst case scenario if, if they want to remove it maybe they could put it someplace elsewhere people can see it the one that was the coolest was the one that was on ronnie's grave because there was there's people there and and they're putting uh, metal things and 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 bullets and things like that that turn green Mm -hmm. in the weather oh yeah yeah they're putting it on that marble and it's uh, and it's staining the marble so they have a sign there and and asking not for people not to put things that will bleed into the marble but the the sign says the, the sign says a man is not dead until he is forgotten <laughs> and that's pretty cool you know yeah yeah nice that's very nice yeah they're very nice Okay. And um, I saw some pictures of the inside of Whitey's. It looks like they have a lot of, do they have Skinnerd 
memorabilia or yeah they've got yeah the there's uh the people in there uh, molly hatchet and stuff donating donating stuff yeah they've got some a uh, showcase and stuff in there they've guys put together I, I forget the guy's name that put it all together but he's really cool uh, and, and, nice uh, i didn't know whitey's i thought it was just a little restaurant i didn't know that they had this you know this memorabilia in there that, i gave uh, him a, i gave him a pic from gary's funeral <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh, nice that'll probably go in the case all right <laughs> So I'm going to continue with these um, these little shout out things, and then we'll go into some questions. And anytime you want to interrupt me and talk about anything else that's on your mind, please. I go had for a it. little list here of the things I wanted to. Uh, yeah, you want to you want to just jump no, in, and I can come I've, back. I've, to I've, this? I've burned through the list, so I'm I'm just um, sitting here waiting for 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 you to just continue. Okay. On this. okay. <laughs> I'm not prepared very much. We'll be if you think of anything, just jump in because I'm going to read oh, all these nice accolades that people have written about you. <laughs> um, so that was uh, Lori Shoemaker. She wants to meet you. And uh, Gleg, I'm sorry, sorry, Greg Lindemann. He says, I like and respect the fact that Craig wants so badly to help the survivors that are currently experiencing health issues. And he mentions that on every podcast, which is what you just talked about. Yeah. Okay, Matt the singer. Okay, yeah, he's the one. He's the one that said you should be Miss New Jersey. Oh yeah, I remember yeah. him. At sixty-one years old, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. But thank you, Matt. Oh, you were <laughs> interested when I said somebody thinks you should be in New Jersey. She, she, you said, who said that? <laughs> I know. I, I wanted to know who he was and actually thanked him. I sent him a message and I said, that was very nice of you. I have that, never heard that one before. <laughs> I had to find out who that person was and thank him. <laughs> He's actually in a band. And I said, you know, try to get a gig in New Jersey. You know, I keep talking with the Stone Pony is an awesome, awesome uh Legendary yeah, I've been doctor. there a couple of times, a few, at least a few times, yeah. You know, I was talking to Otto, it's funny, your buddy Otto last week about um, when he was driving to Jacksonville, I said, you know, you guys have to come out to New Jersey to the beach because you don't have beaches out there. And you go on the boardwalk and, you know, try the food and they have the sausage and pepper sandwiches and the pizza. It's just amazing. Swim in the ocean. And he said, yeah, he said the boardwalk. Isn't that like a carnival on the water? <laughs> <laughs> I, heard that. I said you know what i never thought of it that way but it is kind of like a carnival on the water because they have these piers extending out from the boardwalk with all the rides on them and they're so much fun that was cute the way he said that i never thought about it that way but um all right, i don't so Matt consider i don't consider the beaches at new jersey beaches i <laughs> unless hey. the Unless the water is crystal clear, I don't consider it a beach. <laughs> well, it depends. Sometimes they are. Sometimes they're beautiful sapphire blue and aqua blue. It depends on the tides and what's going on. Yeah, but no, I mean, hey, you know what? I love I love the Jersey Shore. I mean, it's not like the Bahamas, but I love the I, was, I was just going to say, that's why you want to go to the Bahamas, because you have such a beautiful beach there. <laughs> or Maldives. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. When we go to Maldives, <laughs> <laughs> the most expensive resort in the world. That's where. Yeah, that, I know. Fifty thousand dollars a night. That's underwater. Yeah. Yeah. Very beautiful. Cool. Beautiful. Well, Exuma is almost as beautiful as the Maldives in the Bahamas. So I'm going there this summer. All right, <laughs> Matt. Matt, the singer. Craig is the real thing. He met these guys and didn't even know who they were. <laughs> but they were all cool, and that's all that mattered. Now, remember, who did you think they were? When you were at that hotel in Kent in 1973, you were in the bar or something, and somebody said to you, oh, who is the band? Who is outside or something well, like well, that? Well, the lady said you're staying in the room. That She just heard them say something about the, the who. They got off tour with the who, and she said, she said they were the who, and I went, oh, yeah, right. So I went around there, and... I just thought they were a band that was going to play in the hotel. And that's why I said, who oh, you are, the hotel. We just got, we're Leonard Skinner. And, you know, uh, what songs were out then? Um, um, 
first Free album. Bird was, Free Bird was out, and uh, and I forget what other songs were out, but they weren't popular. I never really, I'd heard their songs on the radio, but I didn't really re remember their name yet. I didn't know who they were mm -hmm. at all. And then, and then we, we, and then during the night we were listening to the radio and stuff and we were listening watching Midnight Special and, <laughs> and all that on the TV. Mm -hmm. It was funny, yeah. yeah but, but you didn't even know who they were and uh, you partied with them and had no <laughs> they idea were cool and that's all that matters. <laughs> what do you, what do you play? What do you, <laughs> yeah, what do you guys asking, do? Uh, they said, I, Gary said he was a guitar player and Alan said he was a guitar player. And I said, well, which one of you is the lead guitar player? And they said, both of us. I said, which one of you is the best? <laughs> uh, I can imagine how that went down. How did that go when you answered asked that question? What did you know, Alan say? <laughs> I, you know, was, they just kind of looked at each other, I guess. <laughs> Alan's like, I'm the baddest mofo in this place. <laughs> um, all right, so I'm going to continue with Matt the singer. He says, my heroes were his friends. To hear these stories from Craig, Paul, Gene, Joe, Mike, Steve, and others has been amazing. Craig provides a link to a part of music history that was gone too fast. Thanks for your service, brother. Nicely, nicely said. Okay, here's your buddy, Automotive. What I love about Craig, his answering machine. <laughs> for those of you who have his number just call it and, and get your your uh, recording on because you got to hear it he sings to you <laughs> i remember the one time i was at your house and somebody from the doctor's office called right <laughs> and i think they listened to that recording and they thought they had the wrong number right isn't that what happened we're like what the heck is this funny <laughs> funny okay scott kennel craig is straight up and he doesn't speak too fast that's true <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. scott i'm um, sorry steve rooster one word craig is cool <laughs> oh you're gonna love this one john bennett Brother Craig Reed for president 2024. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's a hoot. Yeah. You got my vote, Craig. You got my vote. <laughs> uh, Keith Swick. He, I think, okay. I may have read this one already. He was right in the mix with the greatest band ever, and his stories are great. Wendy Redwine Gobble. I love the Stone Brody show, and I also love that he has stacked rocks there in the background <laughs> of this picture love you too griff and i have to go into a, a friend of mine mike schmidt from cranford he, he had a question for today how did you get into rock collecting how did this all come about because you know a couple of weeks ago i put a video of when i came out to visit you we were out you know rehoming rocks and people got such a thrill out of that like what's with the rocks why do you collect them you know, um, tell us, because I love the way they look. I mean, you have them stacked in a way that defies gravity, thanks to your buddy, well, um, I, I I kind of told you the story about when, when me and Gary and Dale were over in, in uh, Copenhagen, Denmark, and and uh, yeah, and we, we went to that um, place where the, it was like a hippie kind of place where they people lived in trees and stuff and then there was these little little um, shanties that they had set up and there was and we were on a tour and with the the promoter and we, we were going around and this guy was standing there and he had this rock in his hand you know like this and we're and 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 he saw us and he he looked at us and he went a steen are in steen, you know, and I went, me and Gary kind of went, yeah, cool, dude, but just don't throw that freaking rock at us, you know, <laughs> and we were walking along, and the guy, the promoter guy said, you know what he said, I mean, no, I didn't, he goes, a stone is a stone, you know, <laughs> me and Gary went, 
wow, that's deep, man. You know? <laughs> so the next day I went down to the, to the bus and I'm down there and Gary come up and he had two rocks. <laughs> he said, pick one. I goes, what's the difference? He goes, a stain or a stain, a stone is a stone. So I said, well, I'll take that one. So I took it and I put it in my suitcase and I carried it home. And, and, um, I kind of almost started it, you know, I wanted to find a place out in my, out in my, over on my porch where I could put it where, you know, I, I would know where it was at, you know, mm -hmm. and then I started collecting more and more and more. And I've, I kind of lost it. <laughs> I think it's out there somewhere on the front porch. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, that's because, and now people, um, some guy put a, a a post in response to my video, and he said, hey, Craig, a bunch of rocks here if you want, and there's like a big <laughs> pile of like broken, that looked like broken concrete, though, I don't know if they were rocks, because your rocks are all round. And well, yeah, that, that guy was from Texas, and he, yeah. had, he said, I got 10 piles of rocks like this, but I was comment. I told my, my buddy Sammy was here, and I goes, those rocks don't look like my rocks though. No. You know, it's like, no. it's like you were here. It's like every rock you were picking up. You, I said, actually, Kathy picked the guy, the biggest rock in that truck. <laughs> Kathy picked up and put in there. <laughs> and she was wanting to get out and help me. And I goes, no, you're not going to get out and lift rocks. And I turned around. And she's got one bigger than I was carrying. I went, yeah. <gasps> Make me that I'm out there struggling with these rocks, and she she comes by with one bigger than I had. It's funny. I was into it though, because I was like, well, we kept stopping. There's another one. There's another one. But isn't it as amazing how they're all different? I mean, you know, yeah. they're all just one's white, one's gray, one's black, ones. You know, they're just and but they're all smooth. You know, the ones yeah, they are. Those ones that guy had in Texas were all crinkling and rough and stuff. Mine are all smooth. I guess where those gray glaciers just kept rolling them until they're mm -hmm. smooth. Like, you know, that's like river rocks. They're all really, really smooth, you know. Oh, they're beautiful. I yeah. love river rocks. But so, those you rocks know that you sent, you, you posted for, that were all different colors, the blue and the orange and stuff. Where were those from? I forget. You posted and I reposted it. So oh, know. that was in a beach in uh, Italy. Greece or in I think Italy? it was Italy. Italy. Yeah, I think oh, it was yeah. Italy. Yeah, they they're were just beautiful. Gorgeous. Yeah. Um, Imagine just going there and just, I mean, they look like they were polished stones. They were just beautiful. Yeah. thing about rocks is they're really old. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you you That's can't right. Even imagine how old a rock is. So. They've been here like forever. <laughs> and, and you know, we, we talked about one of the other podcasts, how one of your uh, fans was so inspired that, you know, to contribute to your rock collection that he put a rock in an envelope and mailed it to you. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't a rock. It was a stone from the Roman Colosseum. <laughs> And he put it in an envelope, and it, when it went through the roller, it just ripped the envelope apart. <laughs> I wish I'd have had that thing from the Roman College. That would have been cool. So if anybody watching this has any <laughs> access to the Roman Coliseum or is going, please bring Rock back. You can contact us, and we'll send you. I'll give you the correct address to send it to. I'll Make send sure you a know. box to put it in. <laughs> it Maybe won't. he'll Maybe he'll send you a guitar pick or a pamphlet to thank you, <laughs> <laughs> or a or a uh, business card. <laughs> okay, that was cool. That was a question from my buddy Mike Schmidt from Cranford. Wanted to know how do you get into this thing about collecting rocks anyway? But now we know the story, and you know your buddy. I love Larry Neal. I love Larry. He's the one who does all the rock stacking, right? And just you know, yeah, he's right? the one that kind of started taught me how to yeah larry larry's a real unique unique individual he does all my landscaping but yeah he's been into rocks and uh and and cutting wood he we we uh he used to cut firewood for people and, and when he 
when he would um, get so much of it, he would, he would, instead of just stacking it in piles, he would make big log cabins and, <laughs> and make and make structures out of it. Um, it uh, that guy from the ACDC, the lead singer, he he builds Lego stuff, construction, really? and he built all these houses, all these mansions and stuff out of Legos, and all the rooms and stuff. They were fascinating. I gotta get the phone again. Hello. Yeah, unfortunately, these guys uh, all have to have day jobs because uh, um, they don't make that much money doing these night gigs, unfortunately. But hopefully, they'll get more exposure and get some better gigs. Who is that? Is that Sammy Larry? I don't, or... I don't have any idea. Okay. I said <laughs> the phone's always ringing. It's, it's always on, ringing. <laughs> that's on my goofy phone, and it don't have caller ID on it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, because I you, I tried to call you this morning about doing the podcast, and I accidentally called the cell phone. You're like, why are you calling me on the cell phone? <laughs> I just actually, I just activated my new cell phone this morning. I was I was trying to call Sammy about he was supposed to go with us to the ACDC, and I he called me and said, when we leaving? I goes, I Sammy, I forgot about you. Just meet us at the outpost, and my phone kept <laughs> hanging up, so. I had to use Savannah's phone, so this morning I got up and activated my new phone. <laughs> Did Sammy meet you there? Did you go to the show no, last night? Oh, I called him. I said, "Where are you going?" He goes, "I decided to go fishing instead." Oh, <laughs> I called oh, him this morning. Nice I told him, "I said, Sammy, that that was might have been one of the." 20 best concerts I was ever to in my entire life. Oh, <laughs> oh Sammy. I love you, was, Sammy. I, I swear it really was. I was just totally amazed. Is there a phone off the hook? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm surprised right. you hear that. I could barely hear it. Yeah, I can hear that. All right, I'm going to continue with these. All right. You got a lot here, a lot of fans. A lot of nice things that were said about you. Somebody by the name of TP. Yeah. Craig is a... he God, comes sorry. A lot. I don't know who that is. Yeah. I know he's your friend on Facebook. Um, I don't. Do you know what his real name is or no, where I he have lives? No idea. No. Huh? All right. So uh, he says uh, Craig is a straight shooter, and he has the guts to what that it takes to give it and take it. Okay. <laughs> he has a great sense of humor and makes us all laugh. I respect him for having so much love and commitment to the Leonard Skinner legacy. Much cr gratitude to Greg. Craig. Yay. <laughs> Kevin Taylor says Craig is the r coolest roadie ever. Cody Clark. Now, wasn't Cody down at Whitey's? Isn't he Cody, a musician? Uh, Cody and his dad were both down there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I recognized him. I recognized him. Craig is as real as it gets. I love that he tells his stories and he doesn't blast everyone in the process. Brian Gibbons. Oh, we love Brian Gibbons. Brian's the guy who lost like 125 pounds, right? Who's inspired. Yeah, yeah. By he lost the yeah, he lost the whole person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's a he loves you. He says, What I like about Craig is this. Craig is his own man and he speaks his mind. Everybody thinks that Craig is as cool as the backside of their pillow. So do <laughs> I. <laughs> but I guess the thing I like most about Craig is his sense of humor. Remember, people like Craig Reed, Paul Welch, and Gene Odom are all that's left of the original Skinner with the exception of Artemis. I hope he's still telling us these stories when he's 95. Yeah. And you will be. Well, I'd like to, you know what? I'd like to just kind of go through the people that are still alive. From Definitely. The, from the plane crash that, that that I can remember, you know, and then and as far as band members go, it's, it's Artemis and Leslie. Mm -hmm. and that's it. And Gene Odom. Well, he's not a band member. Oh, right? yeah, right, right. Yeah, Artemis, member. that's right. That's right. Artemis and Leslie, that's it. And then crew people, 
There's Kevin Elson, who was a sound guy, and Clayton Johnson, who was a production manager, and then um, Kenny Peden, who was with Artemis when uh, they went for help, and Mark Frank, who was also with, with Artemis when he was went for help, and Mark was a drum roadie, and Kenny was actually Ronnie's uh, sound man. And then there was, there's uh, Steve Lawler, who worked with uh, uh, um, um, uh, Ron Eckerman, who's no longer with us, with, with upstaging. And then there's uh, Mark, Mark Howard and Paul Welsh and a guy named Jim Brace, who I really don't remember. And I, his name is on the monument stone, but I don't remember if he worked for upstaging or, or Shoko. And then, um, and then there, and then there's me. Uh, and then there was a guy that was, um, the cameraman for the Pepsi film. Mm-hmm. And then there's a guy that was a sound man for the Pepsi film who for some reason, uh, nobody knows who that is. Mm. And that's awfully weird that someone was on that plane and their name isn't on that monument and their name isn't mentioned anywhere. And it's like, that's it's strange. Like, uh, yeah. It's like they're hidden for some reason. And, it's kind of like um, it's possible they could be an FBI agent and undercover. And uh, <laughs> that's why Linda Blair got busted a couple days later. And there was some drug busts in Jacksonville and stuff. And that could all have been related, but that's uh, very speculatory. But it's all also very weird that somebody's name is hidden. That's interesting. You know, that's the only scenario I can come up with why somebody's name would be hidden because they were an FBI agent. <laughs> but yeah. I, I um, kind of weird that I actually, uh, there's a guy that works at a radio station here in Akron and I talked to him and he said that he, had, he actually was a friend of that guy that was the cameraman, Bill Sykes is his name. And and he was on the plane and I, I asked him if there was any way he could get in t- me in touch with him to find out where who the heck that sound man is. Cause there was the, you know, where, where there's a cameraman for a, for a film company, there's a sound man. Mm-hmm. They don't, they yeah. don't, they're not, it's not a multiple, get you know there's two people that do that and and uh but as far as i know i uh you know uh uh, uh donnie crutchmeyer died since since the plane crash and joe osborne has died since the plane crash and um oh boy uh what about chuck flowers chuck, chuck flowers died. Chuck Flowers died before. um, Okay. Plane crash, yeah. And then Ron Eckerman, Ron Eckerman, the road manager, he died here after Mm. he wrote that book. He died after the crash. And, and, uh, you know, forgive me if I'm forgetting somebody, uh, uh, but uh, there's about 10 or 11 of us that are still alive. Uh, But, yeah, all the band are gone. I mean, yeah, uh, except for Artemis and, and Leslie. Yeah, everybody's uh, pretty much pretty much not here anymore. You know, a lot of people are, are continuing to ask to get Leslie on the show, on the podcast, but she's not, she has a lot of don't know. injuries. Don't, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Yeah, I, I, I have tried and tried and tried to get people to find her to, you know, to come on, but you know, she was she. You know, she was on that thing with uh, with Gene when we had the thing down there for the reunion when when Gene did that movie and we all you know did the little interview for the movie. She was involved with that, but 
Yeah, since then I haven't heard from her. Yeah. 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 She just I, wants I, to be I, and I saw uh -huh. Artemis at, the, at Gary's funeral, you know. So I talk to him occasionally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. How's Artemis doing? He looked okay. He's keeping well, himself he busy. Was, he was, you know, he was uh, pretty upset about the whole thing down there. Mm -hmm. I was sad I was sad that he he didn't make it until after they closed the casket, you know, which you know, I I wish he would have got there before they did. But yeah, they, they the the servers went from 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 uh, from noon to one. Oh, and okay. At one o'clock, they closed the casket, and then uh, Artemis got there after that. Oh, but so just an hour. I really like to see Gary, man. Gary looked good. I mean, it's hard to say that about you know somebody that's dead, but. He looked, man, he looked good. I mean, he did. He just looked like he was asleep and he was looked happy. And like mm -hmm. I said before, that Dale said that when he died, he was happy. You know, that he, you know, he played with the grandkids all day. And, and like she said, you know, when, 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 when she, she realized that he'd taken his last breath and she was holding his head up. And she said, when I realized he was actually dead, she said, you know, I actually felt happy for him because I knew he wasn't suffering anymore, you know, yeah. because and she said he'd been gone his last few months were, you know, were not good. And he was on steroids and, you know, and he, and he just went to that, the Ryman theater. Yeah. And yeah. Nashville and then, tried to do that and got pneumonia but you know i talked to uh tom fisher who's pretty much the skinner's road manager and does everything for him you know and he said that actually gary actually recovered from that but he just he never really left the house after that you know that he was that pretty much did him in so so the the performance at the Ryman was his last performance with Skinner. Then yeah, was that, yeah. after okay. that he got pneumonia and then apparently yeah. kind of recovered, but he never left the house after that. Oh, like, shame. Yeah, you know. yeah, very sad. Yeah. All right. All right. Would you like me to continue with these accolades? <laughs> we have a few more. <laughs> we can, yeah, we can just we can just you know this is a. This is a Saturday night special with the Stone Rody Craig Reed and the occasional co-host Kathy Gazzi, who's done 20% yep. of the shows. <laughs> uh, that's 18%. It's number 12. That's okay. I love this song. I love this to be included. Number 12. This is number 12 for <laughs> Kathy Gazzi. Supposed to figure out after they, so that's when we started this thing, they said after 12, you know what you're doing, but uh, oh. it's 65 and I'm still trying to figure it out. <laughs> I don't care. I'm having I, fun with it. You do good. You do good. I, you know, <laughs> I, you know, I, I try my best, but you know, I, I feel like I'm getting more comfortable. <laughs> We don't practice, so if we look a little, you know, <laughs> the cat jumps in the picture or something happens, and I don't care. I don't care. I'm having fun. Who cares? Yeah. So anyway, all right, let's 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 go down. We got a lot. Still more here. Kathy Keeble, good, uh, your friend Kathy. This is what she says about Craig. <laughs> he is so kind and generous and a wealth of knowledge. He is so much fun, and he's been so kind to me and my granddaughter. We know that's little Savannah. Okay. I just love that little girl. She's 16 years old. She was my <laughs> date last night. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if she's 16. I thought she was like 19. Oh, she's 16. Yes. Oh, boy. <laughs> All right. She's a cutie, she's too. So they better watch out where she goes. So cool. Yeah, she is really cool. <laughs> she is. She's cool. I wasn't like that when I was 16. No. <laughs> Kelly Mack says, I love Craig's sense of humor. Everybody loves her sense of humor. Mm -hmm. Okay, Scott Smith. Do you know Scott Smith? Do you remember him? Yeah, 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 yeah. He says, uh, Craig loves flight simulators and the Blue yeah, Angels. Yeah, he, 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 he invited me down to Memphis. He runs the uh, FedEx thing. He, I, he could get me into the... Uh, 
of uh, any of the they, they have a flight simulator down there for FedEx for every plane they have and he said oh. I could fly any plane I wanted matter of fact my my Microsoft flight simulator they just it's been down for a month I haven't been able to fly any planes they finally put got it but it's still not online you're flying out offline but uh, oh yeah, okay. they've uh, they've they've kind of restructured my uh Kathy was flying. She, I taught her how to fly. She was landing and taking off and Me? didn't quite hit. She, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah you, did, you didn't quite hit the runway. You did land successfully, but not on the runway. <laughs> I landed. I, I, I flipped a couple of times and I skimmed some trees, but I landed in the water. I was trying to find the Bahamas. And I, you, we we put in the Bahamas. I was like, this doesn't look like the Bahamas. I don't. It wasn't really the Bahamas, but yeah, that was fun. But you were, you know, you were a little like, you got to do this, you got to do this, you got to do this. You had that both feet and the throttle, and there's a lot of coordination there that I, didn't, I don't really have. I don't have that. <laughs> but Scott said he got you the authentic Blue Angels flight suit. Yes, right? he did. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, I've seen yeah, you wear that. That's one of my prized possessions, my Blue Angels flight suit. I took mm -hmm. it and had my name inscribed in it. <laughs> <laughs> you should wear that for the next podcast. I've worn it before, yeah. For, not for the podcast, though. I think it did once. I oh, you did? I wore my flight suit and I wore my, my skull racing suit one time. Oh, I remember that. I recall you wearing those overalls once. <laughs> and I said, please my burn bibs. those. Yeah, I had to wear the bibs. I've tried to <laughs> tried to go through my whole wardrobe. That's <laughs> that's not gonna I happen. A long way to go. <laughs> that's not gonna happen. <laughs> I never saw anybody with more clothes than Craig. <laughs> or shoes. I never, I mean, I have probably 12 pairs of shoes to my name footwear that's it sneakers boots everything craig i've never seen more shoes in my life every kind of sneakers every it's like going to a warehouse i've never seen anything like that he <laughs> knows exactly which one he's gonna wear i'm gonna wear these i've never seen anything like it I've never okay. seen so many shirts in my life and they're all on hangers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh goodness. All right. Gonna finish go through these. These are good. Uh Patrick Nolan says Craig is not a phony. He tells it like it is. Some of these are repetitive because everybody feels the same way about you. Steve Jones. Craig can skin a buck and run a trout line, and this country boy can survive. <laughs> Jimmy Smith, he shoots straight from the hip with the truth of the way it was and still is. The Stone Roadie podcast will and does much reach more than any book will, in my opinion. IMO. <laughs> the reason for the success of the podcast is Craig's honesty about what, what it was like running with Skinner and other famous world famous rock stars. Um, to Craig Grift and others closest to the band, this is from Terry Lunsford. Thanks for sharing your memories with the diehard fans here on these great podcasts, which are always a hoot. I think the word hoot, I think you started that trend because now people are using this is what a, a, hoot. a hoot. That's a hoot. Yeah. This is a hoot. We don't use that word in New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of words I use you don't use in New Jersey. No. <laughs> 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 Brandon Smith, Craig is easygoing and cool. He's very generous with his knowledge of Skinner and his time touring with them. David Lee, Craig inspired me to lose some weight. Also, I called him <laughs> once during a podcast recording. It's on video. He said, we're doing a podcast right now. I'll call you back. I didn't think he would. An hour later, he did. His son, Chad, is awesome. They both always have time for you. Oh, I know somebody famous. I know Craig Reed. <laughs> <laughs> and the last one, last but not least, from Pear Boleg says, I love Craig's honesty. And uh, Pear Boleg. <laughs> pear Bolegs? Do you know who that is? A pair of Bolegs. Yeah. <laughs> a pair of Bolegs. That affects me. Up. 
He has his first name is P A R E. Yeah, oh, no. pair bow legs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's a real name. No, probably not. You know, um, last last time I was on the show, I think it was cousin Figel asked if Alan ever played the slide. And um, you know, you you have so much to remember such a long time ago, but Alan did play the slide on I I've been your fool. Remember that? I've been your fool. That's the song that uh Ronnie did the yodeling. Remember that? I've been your fool. That's one of the greatest songs. <laughs> and Alan and Gary I both just lied. Remember that, I swear. That's man. okay. You don't have to remember everything, but somebody <laughs> said, "Oh, he played the he played the slide on that one." So that's what, you know, those are some of the um there are a lot more actually, but I pulled majority of them in response just to Griff's question about what everybody loves about Craig. I do have some questions for you though, if you're okay oh, with Oh, go it. ahead. Yeah. Since we're on a roll here. Okay. Questions. Um, okay. Okay. From Cousin Figel. We love Cousin Figel. Cousin Figel, I tried to friend you on Facebook and you never responded. So check your friend request. <laughs> but he said, I remember uh, in one of the Skinner books, it's out there that Ronnie said, Paul Rogers has the best voice in rock and roll. Do you recall Ronnie saying that? Yeah, yeah. One of Ronnie's favorite vocalists was Paul Rogers. Yeah, yeah indeed yeah. it was. Yeah. And he, um, he actually, I saw a picture of him. You standing in the background. He was at the Gary service. Paul Rogers was standing, and somebody took a photo. Yeah, like I said before, I, 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 I was out in the the, the corridor, and somebody got on the microphone and was was speaking too loud and over modulated and he said oh excuse me i'm a vocalist and i i couldn't really tell who it was and i looked in the program and he wasn't listed and then after the funeral him and dale and the girls were kind of singing amazing grace alongside the grave and i just i didn't really know who it was i just you know didn't uh, you know and then somebody said Paul. It was Paul Rogers. I went, oh dang, you know, I kind of know him, you know, but yeah, mm -hmm. no big deal, you know. But uh, yeah, all the band guys, Sparky, come, uh, Sparky said hi to me, you know, and I just, well, I'm surprised you know who he, I'm, who I am, and he goes, yeah, 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 and mm -hmm. um, yeah, and, and uh, you know, I said hello to Michael and, and Johnny and Ricky and. Uh, Oh God, Damon! You know, uh, I haven't I haven't talked to Peter uh, Peter Keys yet. I saw him there. I just not that I don't like him. I just did, I don't know. He was kind of talking to other people, and I didn't want to interrupt. You know, I I heard Keith Peter's a really nice guy. I just haven't haven't talked to him yet. But. Okay, all right. Um. Thank you for that. Yeah. And, you know, somebody said something like, oh, how cool that, you know, Craig was, I mean, Craig was lucky enough to be in the picture with, in the presence of Paul Rogers. And I was thinking, no, <laughs> Paul Rogers should be luck, be happy that he was in the presence of Craig Reed. <laughs> I actually have two, two autographed pictures of Paul. Yeah, I, really? Oh, cool. In my, in my collection. You've probably seen them. But... I don't recall seeing that. If I did, I would have taken pictures of those pictures you went because I was all my autographs. <laughs> I didn't see Paul Rogers. <laughs> I was looking for the old uh, candid Skinnerd pictures. I saw a couple that I took photos of, but um, I don't recall you seeing Paul Rogers. A lot of my stuff. <laughs> yeah, I did. I know, you and I haven't. Craig gave me some really cool things that are very precious to me. And um, they're not for sale or trade or anything. You'll never see me selling that stuff. There's, I have the the metal thing that the guitars with Craig's name hanging on my dining room. And I would never sell that for anything. So I'm very... I gave, I gave you a big stack of stickers and you took that one sticker and stuck it on your suitcase. I said, <laughs> that sticker sells for about... About two hundred and fifty dollars, and it was on the airplane crash. <laughs> yeah. Well, you said to me, you said, "Where did you get that sticker?" 
I think you gave it to me. He said, well, I don't have that many of those. You know, that's expensive. I said, you want it back? I'll take it off my suitcase. But I had to have but I had to actually that surprised me. I, yeah, I don't give those away. You must have been very special that day. <laughs> I well, just, I've been on 12 podcasts. I guess I deserve a sticker. <laughs> just don't give those away. Yeah, that baseball sticker. You know, those those sell for I know. <laughs> no, because I think you saw it in the in the picture. I took a picture of all the stickers. That's what it was. And you saw the baseball one there. Like, where'd you get that one? But, um, that's okay i'm not you know have now that when i travel with that suitcase with all those cool stickers i'm gonna have to be really careful that it doesn't leave my oh, the first time you flew here you were so upset because one of them fell off and the next time you flew you put your bag in a garbage <laughs> bag so none of the stickers would come off <laughs> i was so pissed that the couple of times they took my my bag and they said we have to check it and i was like what so after that, every time I flew, I put a big green garbage bag and sealed up the, the thing because I was like, you know, these are my special stickers. I remember asking one of the gate agents, can you make sure I could take this on board with me because I have some special <laughs> stickers on you. <laughs> and when the sticker disappeared, that one, I think it was maybe a journey or foreigner sticker. So it wasn't, it wasn't like a Skinner. I actually went up to the, I went up to the, um, the baggage claim area and I gave them hell. I was like, you know, these are very special stickers. A lot of them disappeared. I think somebody <laughs> stole a sticker off my suitcase. <laughs> and, the, and the baggage claim lady said, well, it's more likely that it just came off. <laughs> like I'm never checking my luggage. Some, like, you met some lady on the plane. She said, where'd you get all those stickers? She thought you were somebody, huh? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I told her about the podcast. Anybody who signed, can, some of them, I, I signed your name on them and stuff. You know, so. Yeah, those are, I might even take them off the suitcase <laughs> now because I'm so worried about something happening. I put your name on them and then authorized them by me. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I gave my friend, I told you, my friend Anthony Whiteman, the Van Halen sticker because he, the backstage yeah. pass or something, he loves Van Halen. So he's very happy to have that one. Yeah, but. But I would never, uh, no, they're, they're not for sale or trade or anything. <laughs> All right. Uh, J you know, James John J uh, James Johnson, he put, I'm a new subscriber here loving the podcast. That's a name that I don't, I don't recall seeing in the past, but, you know, let's give a shout out to James Johnson. Now, um, a guy by the name of Jeff. Now, I, kn I know you probably know the answer to this one. He wants to know where are Alan's Firebird and Explorer? Now, Amy, Alan's daughter, has the Explorer. No, she has the Firebird, right? Doesn't Amy have the? You know I have. I I heard that Amy was going to be at the funeral, but she wasn't there. Mm. And I don't know. I I saw a Joe Bazamasa. Uh, I saw him somewhere holding alan's explorer i don't know where that picture was taken but somebody said it's still up at the rock and roll hall of fame they're just not um displaying oh. it i don't know why they would do that but yeah i'm i'm not sure amy amy just doesn't want to, anything to do with the, the whole thing she yeah yeah just, just doesn't even want to talk about it her and chad are really good friends and she doesn't even, you know, uh, uh, answer Chad's calls or anything when he calls sometimes. She just doesn't want to yeah. go back to that time period. Yeah, I'm sure it brings back a lot of sad times and sad memories. And she doesn't want to, she's moved on with her life. I believe she's a granddaughter, uh, gr a grandmother. She's a grandma. Yeah. And um, I, I, I respect that, you know, it's they went through a lot, those those kids. All right, so we're not really sure about that. I know that Amy, I believe Amy had the Explorer she had in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, but we don't know. I think I heard one of them was sold at auction, right? Well, I think maybe the I'm Firebird not, was sold at auction. I'm not sure. It okay. was real cool. I, Gary's, uh, Mary and Annie were, were there, and and uh, I, I went up and saw Gary, and then I went back, and, and Dale and Annie and Mary were there, and Annie and Mary saw me, and they go, Craig Reed. Oh my God, mom, Craig Reed's here. Oh my God. And they come up and hugged me, you know, and then, 
and mm -hmm. then after the after they after the thing where they lowered gary into the ground annie was over by the funeral home and i walked up and she goes craig reed look at little annie all grown up you know and that was it's pretty cool you know oh. yeah. i think you know i see photographs of those girls one of them looks very much like gary same yeah, smile the same all the time and the girls would answer the phone and they go dad it's craig reed and he'd come oh. right to the phone yeah yeah it was really cool oh. You had a very special friendship with those guys. Yeah, you know? I, me and Gary were really close. And I'm just, just, just not blowing smoke out my butt. We were, mm -hmm. we were, had a very good relationship, me and Gary did. And so did me, 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 you know what I did with all the band guys, each and every one of them. There's not one of them that we didn't have a very special relationship with. And, you know, I'm real proud of that, you know. I mean, anybody I ever worked with, really, I had a real close relationship even even marshall tucker me and doug gray are still real good friends you know and uh, all the journey guys i i used to see them every now and again and they were all you know they were all very friendly to me and mick jones from foreigner you know he remembered me and yeah I was, you know i had a good time with all those guys didn't you say when you were on touring with um journey that you shared a room with uh steve steve perry yeah 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 yeah, what was we, that like? <laughs> I, you know, when we put when we played in Europe, you know, sometimes because the crew guys, we didn't, we didn't really. There was not a lot of sense for us to get a hotel room because we just after the gig we'd show up at the a hotel and we were there for a couple hours until we caught a plane or whatever in the next place. So we they just had it so where the, one of the band guys would have to let one of the crew guys in and sleep with a slit to, to, to sleep, you know, and, and Steve Perry said, I want blaze, you know, yeah. <laughs> I said, I want blaze. So yeah, I would, but yeah, I would just go knock on the door and he'd come in the door and let me in and I go sleep. You know? <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> but didn't you say he used to do those really cool vocal warm ups? Oh, Steve, well, yeah, before every yeah. show, he'd go in, he'd find the bathroom or the showers or whatever, you know, and go in there and run scales. <laughs> People don't realize that. They think they just come out there and perform, but they don't. They have to do that, you know, that warm up and, uh, yeah, that's amazing. That's pretty cool that you were able to sh share the room and some cool experience with uh, Steve Perry. Yeah. All right. Um, got a question from Adrian Metatesta. Mez I'm sorry, Mezatesta. Adrian Mezatesta. What kind of drums did Artemis play on the live tour shows? Do you recall that? Slingerlands, yeah. Okay. And yeah, yeah, and it's... And it, it's funny that uh, the guy last night, the ACDC guy, asked me that. And I said, Slinger. And he goes, oh, Ludwig. I goes, no, Slinger. And he goes, well, same thing. I went. Yeah. <laughs> Back in 77 or 76 or 75, I don't think Ludwig and Swingerland were combined. I don't know if they are now. And he, he was, well, what were they made out of? I said, well, they were either five or seven ply maple, you know, they were real thick and, and, uh, you know, we had them custom made, but he said Slingerland and Blegwig are basically the same drums. Now he used so, uh, Sonic, you know, just, you know, but, uh, yeah, he said, yeah, I'd like to have some five ply maples. <laughs> oh. but I was never aware that Slingerland and Ludwig were, together and I don't think they were back in the day because I, I I did all the endorsements and I don't re recall Ludwig and Swinger and having a code deal back then. Hmm. It might okay. now, I don't know. All right, cool. Very good. Thank you for the, that's from Adrian Meza Testa. Okay, gotta do more. Love this guy. I don't know what his name is, but <laughs> now he has a question about, you remember the onstage group photo for the One More from the Road album? You're in that yeah. picture, everybody. He wants to know, he said, you know, all the band is identi identifiable, but can you um, 
remember any of the other names of the people in that picture? Wasn't um, Artemis the son in that picture? There was a child Artemis in there. Artemis' son, Chris, was between Gear, uh, Alan, uh, Ronnie's legs. Yes, and, yes. Uh, yeah, Ch Chad, Chad was there, and he... He saw Chris over there, and he was going to go over there, and I think his mom stopped him or whatever. I don't know. Oh, no, uh, God, I don't remember. It was um, it was me and Kevin, and then me, and then Joe, and then Cassie, and on the top row, and then uh, who else was in that picture? Oh God, I. I, I was going to get the album out to have it ready for you, but um, yeah, I, I, I didn't have, have a, I don't have that picture anywhere close. Um, yeah, I can't. Uh, can't it was basically remember. just the crew members, right? It was the band and the crew members. Yeah, band and and and, and uh, sound and lights. The, okay. the band and the band crew and the sound and light show yeah, that was all that was in there the, the keyboard tech and the then the lighting guys and the you know, stuff like that okay cool all right that's got to do more all right hope we answered that question there's a uh somebody who goes by the name of ban everything <laughs> <laughs> Okay, ask Craig if it's true. You're gonna love this one. Do you remember something about a peanut butter basket and a cardboard milk crate? Does that ring a bell? No, all right. Something about a peanut butter basket and a cardboard milk crate. I don't know. No, I don't know what that means. The only but... thing I remember about any kind of crate was an orange crate. And uh, they used it in the in the song. Dun, dun. And they hit that orange crate with oh. a, a two by four. Yeah. Yeah. Made in the shade. When I first met you, babe, you was a red light girl. So I tried to take you to a better world. But you. <laughs> would not listen still you think i am a fool <laughs> well you had it made in the shade baby don't let that oh, let that fall, tree down, fall on down on you and we can lay <laughs> he who <laughs> ooh. Oh, oh, Ronnie loved that yodelay. Yeah. Great, great, great. <laughs> we practiced that for a month. Uh, yodelay. <laughs> <laughs> Made in the Shade. That's a great song. Uh, anybody, please forgive me for trying to sing that because I can't sing, but I can't yeah, resist. Too. That's a, uh, no, you can sing. That's a <laughs> yeah right. I love "Made in the Shade." Oh, I love that song! Wow, mm. great song. All right, Cindy Porter. Um, I guess you mentioned about Leon wandering off or something, and he why he had a bail bondsman. She says we need a show about Leon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. And his shenanigans, <laughs> and his wandering mm. off, and why he had a bail bondsman. What was that all about? Is that true? He had a bail bondsman. Right? Leon, the instigator. Yeah, his <laughs> his good friend was a bail bondsman. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> God, and the names. Oh, the name escapes me right now. Dale. Uh, God, I forget. Yeah. Well, it's okay. Yeah, D Leon needed a bail bondsman. <laughs> 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 the instigator. Well, you were telling me about uh, Gary. You were talking about how Gary, when you guys were in uh, Germany, oh, he, was, God, yeah. he was raising hell, running, going through the streets, three o'clock in the morning. Where, do no, what, Brian, you Evers, Brian Evers called me in my room. He goes, Craig, we're leaving. We're in the bus. We're leaving. Gary's down here. He wants something to eat. And we're trying to tell him you're not going to find anything to eat at three o'clock in the morning. And he is bound to determine. And he just took off up the street. And you got to come down here and go chase him down. So I did. I ran down there and I caught up with him. And 
he was insistent he was going to get something to eat at three in the morning at <laughs> Denny's or whatever in during. Yeah. And nobody speaks English there, you know, and I'm out there trying to rationalize with him, you know, and he's yelling, screaming, bunch of damn krauts, uh, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> drunk. Oh my God. Yeah, he kicked in. He kicked in a, we were but, uh, trying, he was trying to get in this bar and they told us to go away and he kicked the damn window, broke the window. I thought we were going to, yeah. Yeah. Th three o'clock in the morning, a bunch of drunk damn Germans and here's a couple of damn hippies out here kicking the windows in. And didn't and, and didn't understand English. Even if I was trying to explain my way out, they didn't wouldn't have understood me. Yeah, that was so uh, weird. Did Gar did Alan do any of those those shenanigans or no? I don't hear too much about um, Alan. Yeah, kind of, yeah, not to that extreme. That was <laughs> that was pretty out there that night. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I only hear about the things that Alan did at home. You know, with his. His, his shotguns and his gun collection and his <laughs> BB guns and <laughs> shooting yeah. people if they try to get to the house or, you know, he's... They all had their issues. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, so Cindy Porter wants to show about Leon. But, you know, it wouldn't... It would be a nice idea to do shows just about, you know... Um, each of the band members. We did... You and I did a show, I think it was my second podcast with all about Alan and we just answered questions about Alan and you know, people want to know. So that was really yeah, nice. We could, that's a, that's kind of a, you know, something that, you know, we can do if we don't have anything else to do, we'll just pick somebody and just talk about them for the day, you know? Yeah. There's, there's yeah. just, I'm just amazed we've done 65 of these podcasts and we really, I really haven't even touched the surface about anything. You know, I really haven't. I mean, you know, there's just so much. To, I mean, every time we talk about something, people, a lot of times people ask the same questions, but a lot of times it's just, you know, new stuff. I mean, there's just, it's just amazing that in less than four years, that band built such a, yeah. a following, you know, I mean, it's yeah. just, it's amazing that, you know, just in that four year period that 50 years later, it seems like, you know, everything they did, people know about. I mean, I've got, I've got all of the itineraries. I haven't even thought about getting in my itineraries and, and just starting from day one and go, you know, here's what we did this day. And, oh, yeah. Oh, know, my goodness. And, you know, yeah. Yeah. I know. Or if no. you had kept a journal or something like that, oh that journal God. would have been yeah. Gee. very valuable. If I would have wrote down stuff from every day, a diary. Can you imagine? Oh, whoa. Can you that imagine? Oh my God. I can't, I can't remember hardly, you know, I mean, you do it every day. Every day is just repetitious. And when you're doing it like that, you just every day just runs together, but every day there was always something different. But at the time, it just it just seemed, you know, like the same thing that happened the day before. But it was quite the contrary. It was something totally different every day. But it's just, you know, it's just can't go back. You know, I wish I would have. I wish I'd have everything we ever did. I wish I'd have carried a little tape recorder, but. <laughs> God, I'd have had, you know, I'd have, you know, you, the, t the tapes that I did, I like with my films, you know, when I did the films, I, it was set up. So where I hit the button, there was a, it wasn't on the same tape, you know, but when I hit, there was, a, I, my camera had a thing where I hit the button and it would start a, ta a cassette recorder mm -hmm. and it would sync with what I was doing, but what happened to those tapes? Who knows? <laughs> you know? Yeah. You yeah. Know? People love to see, uh, listen to Alan's voice. There's the, there are a couple of things floating around on YouTube of um, Alan talking and people just love, I love to hear Alan's voice. They just love it. They love footage of Alan. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it's just so precious. And we didn't have the video tapes and recordings and the cameras and all that stuff we have today but 
People love that footage. I saw, I put something on your Facebook the other day it was something to do with Skinner and they were showing um, the your, your, your tapes again. It was everything, I'm sure it was all tapes by you, you know, your videotapes, Gary and everybody. I'm yeah, sure I'm everybody. gonna, I'm gonna have to get, get it together and, 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 show those tapes and, and narrate yeah. what was happening and uh yeah I'm not gonna see him anymore even if <clears throat> even if Lin when leonard skinner continue on this summer tour or whatever they're doing i i called the management and i said you know now gary's gone maybe you'd like to you know get more uh, personal stuff besides that to show on the the screens besides stuff that you can just go on youtube like the the bill graham films and and right. uh, i asked him if they wanted to use my films it would be more personal because it was stuff with the airplane and backstage and then they said no we'll just we'll just stop use stuff that we can get off the internet so they don't have to pay for that they had to yeah, pay it's too bad yeah <laughs> And you have some great photographs at home that I don't recall ever having seen in print. Oh, a lot of stuff. Print. A lot of stuff I have. I haven't shown. Yeah. yeah. You have some good, good candid pictures that have not been, have not been put out. There, oh, yeah, so. and I, I'm the photographer for them. I'm, you know, they, I own them. <laughs> yeah. I own the picture. Yeah. You have some photos of the, the, um, the, the photo shoot for the Rossington Collins uh, band um, the album cover. The guys are all standing in front of the Hell House, and you have those those pictures that you took of them. I mean, they've never been seen or printed anywhere. So, oh God, I've got a I've got a vinyl record of Gary and Alan doing an interview uh, for the Rossington Collins band, and it's it's actually on a it's on a, a like a four record set of a vinyl record set with a great oh my band. goodness and it's never been opened i've never even opened it and it's on vinyl oh people are going to be wanting that you're going to get some <laughs> people are gonna be, you're going to get you could get big bucks for that if you wanted to sell it or share it or whatever Do wow dollar 50 yeah yeah <laughs> and then people would say i'd sell the pennies of steal the pennies of a dead man's eyes he's just <laughs> trying to line his pockets with cash you know yeah. <laughs> yeah. gene odom says i got jar uh, uh, jars of money stat buried in my yard <laughs> 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 what <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Says that? <laughs> uh, Gene Odom says Chad you better have your dad write a map for all that where he's got all that money buried in his <laughs> the only that's thing what, I know that you have in your car Greg. I'm sorry <clears throat> As he that's what he told Griff he says if that Craig Reed's got jars <laughs> of money stashed in his yard out there he better tell Chad where it's buried where he <laughs> <laughs> What, what what you do have in your yard for anybody who missed the discussion he's got Alan Collins's car in his in his yard that's pretty that's pretty cool it's, it's part of my yard now it's yeah yeah it's part, part of, of your yard <laughs> become part of the yard yeah that's that and that's where it should stay that's where it should stay that's its final home but yeah it's pretty cool and you know the license plate is in your kitchen. <laughs> yeah yeah i know somebody that wanted that real bad when they were here <laughs> yeah somebody offered me 500 bucks for that yeah yeah well think about it <laughs> <laughs> what are you gonna do with all that stuff anyway come on come on all that all stuff right. goes to tanner oh as a matter of fact tanner got hit by a baseball in the nose yesterday by an 85 year a mile an hour fastball hit him right in the nose. They said blood oh, just no. scattered everywhere. Yeah. Oh my God, that poor kid. It just, it just knocked him down, and he stood up and shook it off, and and uh, opened his hands, and it was full of blood. So. <laughs> oh, poor kid. Oh, yeah. He's uh, how how fast can he throw a ball? 
He's at he's right he's right at um, ninety. That's great. That's great. Wow, that's good for him. Yeah, if he could have, if he could have got up to ninety two, he would have went right to the may uh, right to the major leagues. But he, I, yeah, I was down there when he signed the signed the deal to uh, Thomas University. He got a full ride to Thomas University for baseball. That's Whoa. Crazy. Uh-oh. What's one going my, on? My, one of my green screen panels just fell out of the window. <laughs> <laughs> for my for my other shot over there when I'm using Aww. the desk. <laughs> I see uh, Leon or Wicker. Somebody's there. How come they're not sitting next to you? They're right here. Oh, they are? I don't see them. Yeah. Oh, there they are. There's Leon. Cute. Oh, he's so cute. So cute. Leon. Hey, Leon. Hey, Leon. <laughs> He's a cutie. <laughs> and don't five, forget Wicker. Five, Wicker. five pounds of, of yeah. uh... love. <laughs> love. <laughs> oh. All right. Got a couple more questions. I mean, this is a great podcast. <laughs> We're not lacking material. Okay. Tommy Bowling's. He wants to know if you remember a show. Okay, this is going back to 1974. Central Park, New York. He says it was 70, it was uh, September 6, 1974 in Central Park. Skinner sold out the Spectrum in Philly the same month for two nights in a row. That were they were seventeen thousand seats back then. Do you recall that at all? I remember playing the Spectrum in Philly, yeah, because I remember me and me and Artemis um, ran over there. He was he wanted to go out. We were at the hotel and he wanted to go to the gig and he just wanted to jog over. So me and him <laughs> ran Aww. just jogged over to the gig. Yeah. Oh, I, okay. Yeah. Took cool. A <clears throat> All right. And then there's one more question. Um, this is from Mel Melvin Faucet. I guess he's a new, I know he emailed me actually. And I said, please ask Craig these questions. He said, I just found the Stone Roadie show yesterday and I love the podcast. I just wanted to know how to watch one of the live shows or to send a question to Craig. Now we know we don't do live shows. And he wants to know, does Craig remem remember any Skinner shows in North Carolina? Now, I just want to say, I did mention, I did respond, and I said, we don't do live, sh they don't do live shows. And if you want to send a, a question to Craig, you could send it to me, you could send it to Griff, you could put it on the uh, YouTube, you could put it on Craig's Facebook page, he'll get it. Do you remember any Skinner shows in North Carolina? He said, I had heard that it was a motorcycle club, the Hells Angels, that was acting up. And Ronnie had to handle the situation or calm things down during the show. He says, I think maybe ZZ Top was playing also. Do you recall anything like that? Hells Angels? Yeah, we had the Hells Angels show up at some shows. And there was a one time there was a significant issue, but. Um, God, I don't know. They they showed up at a bunch of shows. One time, one time the, the I think it was the treasurer, of the Hell's Angels. His girlfriend was, was was was, and some other one of the other officers' girlfriends were there, and they wanted to get up and sing with the honkettes, and we let them. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God! <laughs> yeah, the whole thing is, I forget the guy's name. He was the treasurer, I think. I don't know. Yeah, we had the we had the Hell's Angels at a few shows. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and um, you know, people are asking. Uh, you know, people are always asking for you to write a book. That's not going to happen. But well, uh, you know, I commented on that yesterday. I said, you know, I've decided I'm going to write a book. When I do, I don't th feel like there's anything in my life that's uh, yeah. that, that 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 I'm I'm done with, you know, because uh, I just before the show I just kind of 
told you about something that's happening <laughs> that we're going to do a podcast about that I just Stay tuned about. for the next Stone Roadie podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that I kind of shared with you that I've been Crazy. kind of said something about before, but I don't want to talk any more about it right now. <laughs> no. But it's going to be, it'll be amusing, yeah. You know? There's a reason you can't talk about that we're right gonna, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do uh, what do you call them? Um, oh, I hate it when that happens. Um, um, oh, and on the road, you're gonna do an on the road or oh, something like um, that. Oh God, I am. I'm having a issue. <laughs> okay, it'll come to you when you're, when it comes to you. We'll talk about it. Yeah, it's uh, you know, um, a reality. So yeah, the Craig Reed reality. <laughs> <laughs> what goes on when you're not doing the podcast yeah our saturday night <laughs> special we'll do saturday night specials about leonard skinner and then we'll yeah you know, the, the adventures of craig reed <laughs> and the crap <laughs> that you get involved on in <laughs> saturdays yeah <laughs> stuff the stuff that stuff that's still happening that i'm gonna write a book about. <laughs> yeah there i got some unusual i got some well, you've been here. I got some interesting characters that hang around here. <laughs> yeah, you do. You do. <laughs> There's always something going on here. <laughs> so, you know, a lot of people have asked about you, um, your stone roti soup. You, we've talked about it. Uh, you've given the recipe, but you know what? You, so you kind of got, you haven't made soup in a while, but you've been kind of experimenting with new recipes. And Craig, <laughs> Craig has an interesting way of cooking things. He does it in a very <laughs> unconventional manner. He'll be like, oh, I'm going to buy a wok. And then he'll start cooking everything with a wok. But, um, you know, I said, maybe you want to make a, put out a stone roadie cookbook with your recipes. <laughs> 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 or make something because now you're making this really cool cucumber salad and um you know it sounds so good and i actually tried to do something like that it, i have don't have the patience for that don't have the, but well, when you, you know, were here i was i was i was actually buying that cucumber salad at the giant eagle and you goes oh this is good and it is good and, uh, and yeah. i was going you know i'm i'm eating so much of this i could i could just make it myself you know so i you know i uh found my Cutco uh, fruit peeler <laughs> and, went and, and went and bought a, a mandolin for slicing my cucumbers. And, <laughs> and then I learned how to make the, uh, the special dressing out of yogurt and vinegar. Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, ball, uh, salad dressing, the, um, yeah, what do you call yeah. the... Yeah, I found another use for the spicy Italian... <laughs> <laughs> with, this, with all that salt in it but i was telling you about how i tr i was trying to make my own cucumber salad and you said well do you have the mandolin slicer it's like no <laughs> i don't have all those fancy gadgets that's oh, probably God, why yeah, you have gotta it. have the cucumbers paper thin before it's any good yeah <laughs> yeah i don't have to, i don't have all those gadgets I just boy, watch out for those things man i'm gonna tell you what those that blade on that thing is sharp Really? Oh my God! Yeah, I cut my finger really bad. <laughs> yeah, now all you gotta do is cut your finger. Yeah, my nephew said he took said that he took the tip of his finger off on his. Oh wow! Yeah, they, yeah, they give you a little cup that you slide, you know, so you don't get your finger because it will yeah. flip your finger right off, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have yeah. you ha come up with any other recipes? Anything new that you're into? Um, you know, now that you're kind of over just, the soup. Well, um, you know, I've, I'm, 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 I'm on that. Um, I, I fast at least 24 hours a day. You know, um, at least 24 hours a day, and and you, you gotta, you gotta vary it. You know, you, your body will say, "Aha, I'm on to you now." You know, so you gotta fool your body. You know, when you do it, but. Yeah, at least twenty four hours a day, and and um, yeah, I'm uh, I've been eating uh, uh, tomato sandwiches. <laughs> yes, <laughs> tomato. That's uh, so what I put them on: the sliced tomato, and oh, I fry an, I, I fry an egg in my wok, 
and and, oh, and, put, and and then I melt Swiss cheese on it, and then I, <laughs> and I put toma tomato on it, and then uh, uh, I slice a, a, a Vidalia onion and uh, and um, zesty dill pickle. <laughs> 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 what else is on there? Pepper, so, yeah. You have a lot it's of patience very, uh, on rye, on rye on rye bread. Yeah, oh, yeah. nice. Yeah. So you do yeah. you do have some special recipes. You may want to publish those or post yeah, them. But, yeah, I kind of got tired of the stone roti soup after. <laughs> but, yeah, I haven't made I haven't made that for a couple of weeks. Yeah, a couple of weeks. I haven't heard yeah. about it for a couple of months. Wow. Well, yeah, it's been a while, but yeah, I've been I've, yeah I've been doing the cucumber salad and the tomato sandwiches for a while. But you I'm still hooked on. I'm still de eating the slices of ginger and the coffee beans and the mm -hmm. and the uh, kiwi and the and the blueberries and blackberries and oatmeal and you know just yeah. just a variety of. So whatever. you eat pretty healthy, Craig. I don't see are you eating <laughs> any fast food. I no. <laughs> well, he, I told you I had to. I, I I I had to resort to my old hangover medicine this morning. I had to go out and get me a chocolate milkshake because of those <laughs> all those beers I drank last night. So I called the local Arby's and tried to get them a Jamocha shake, and they, their mm -hmm. shake was broke. So I had to call around <laughs> and find find the place that had a Jamocha shake. I was <laughs> I was just gonna go buy some ice cream and do it, but I said oh, I'll just. <laughs> and why did you have a hangover again this morning? What did you do last night? I drank, night? I don't know how many Guinness stouts. I don't know how many I drank. You said six. I drank a bunch of them, yeah. I lost count. Oh, was, my goodness. I was a little tipsy <laughs> last night. <laughs> I think I ate a couple of gummies, too, and uh, yeah. I don't remember what I else. That could attribute to the hangover this morning. <laughs> Jeff. Jeff, instead of buying a drink, he just tried to buy, he wanted to buy the best bottle of, uh, he, he wanted a drink of vodka, and he said, I'll just buy the bottle, what's the best bottle? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Jeff, he come, you know, he come over, he brought those, he brought you a a, a bottle of crystal uh, vodka, oh, and me one, yeah. you know, the, the yeah. crystal heads, and yeah. I, I I convinced you that they wouldn't let you fly with the vodka, so I emptied the bottle and gave you the empty bottle. <laughs> yeah, I have the empty bottle right here. <laughs> they won't let you fly with that thing full. You better empty it. Leave the bottle. And take yeah, it. yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, I tried to get through the airport with that little uh, thing for my neighbor that I bought for her. That little oh, for Christmas, yeah. With the water with the water in it and um as i was going through security the security guy oh there's something sketchy in this carry-on bag <laughs> yeah. and they opened it up and they found it it was so cute how little santa claus it's like a snow globe type of thing lantern and um oh i don't want to say what the air airline was but i said i brought it for my elderly neighbor she's taking care of my cat <laughs> first she said you're gonna have to check that and then she said to me just take it just take it nobody told you so anybody <laughs> asked you didn't go through but yeah that was cute but the bottle of crystal skull wasn't gonna happen crystal head whatever wasn't gonna happen <laughs> but, yeah that was interesting um craig there's one more thing uh, a guy named uh emailed me by the name of rick adams and he said, you know, I saw this special that you did, the uh, Stone Roadie with Craig Reed and Gene Odom, when you were telling the story about how you first met Alan Collins. And uh, he said, I really wanted to hear it, but I noticed that um, um, Gene Odom started talking and they put you on the back burner and you didn't get to finish your story. <laughs> so, you know, um, maybe at some point on another podcast, a Saturday Night Special, I can kind of retell that story about you know, having met Alan and how I utilized my, um, you know, resources and the six degrees of separation, which I believe you can meet anybody. So that was kind of cool. But, you know, a lot of people ask questions that we've already talked about on all these podcasts. So if anybody has podcasts to catch up, you know, with watching, please watch them because there's everyone is different and there's so much fun and, and Griff and uh, Craig are funny as hell the way they do these podcasts. And um, I would recommend watch all of them.
you know, and subscribe because they're so much fun. Griff couldn't do the one um, yesterday. He was in Gainesville. That's why we scheduled you to yeah. come on yesterday. He was in Gainesville, but while he was down there, he actually did a um, a uh, on the road with Griff Martin and uh, went down to where Tom Petty lived in Gainesville and kind of did a little tour of uh, oh cool of where Tom Petty grew up and stuff and he. He asked me if, if if we went we didn't have much to to, to go over today if we wanted he, he'd send me that clip of Tom Petty I said I said no I think we got quite a bit to co <laughs> to cover from from last yeah. night my, my little adventure with the yeah. ACDC band and all this other stuff that's going on and and I think I think we can cover it but yeah we'll we'll be doing that next and. Griff Griff's got a, a hold of the people at Muscle Shoals, and he's got like four people there that were were there when uh, Muscle Shoals was active and 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 really doing stuff because they've 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 sold the the facility and it's not what it's not a studio or nothing anymore. And he was going to go there and do a tour, but. Um, Somebody called, talked to me and said, man, there's nobody there that knows anything anymore after they watched the Stone Roadie show and we talked about going. He goes, but I can hook you up to the people you need to talk to. So mm -hmm. I got put him in touch with Griff. And since then, yeah, he's got a hold of uh, the guy that owns a place and has got all the equipment. And Oh, cool. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're, they're, cool. they're in the middle of negotiating, trying to get some of that stuff into the, actually the Smithsonian Institute. And the guy said, yeah, you can come and look at it, but you can't take a picture of anything. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. yeah, he's got some interesting stories about, oh, I got it. I think he's got one about Aretha Franklin and stuff. And, and when they did, used to do records there, some guys um, um, got some stories about, uh, about that. And then, and then and and then down in um, at Whitey's, we 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 ran into some people down there that have some interesting stories about Allen and 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 then some of the local uh, Jacksonville legends actually asked yeah. that they want to become a part of the do a Stone Roadie show. So uh, yeah, we got we got a bunch of stuff coming on, and you know hopefully. The lovely Miss Kathy Gosky can free up her schedule a little more, and we can have her coming on every like, once in a while, except for <laughs> <laughs> get up to twenty five percent of the shows. Right yeah, there. yeah, yeah. Well, I was so yeah. happy when you guys announced on the last show that you reached the thousand. I, I was home, you know, celebrating. Yay, you got the thousand subscribers! But you know, it's um. You know, it's every lot got a, a lot of new people watching and following, and I think the result, you know, as a result of the all the, you know, what, what happened at Whitey's, you have a lot more followers, and um, you know, everybody really loves the show. So I'm so happy to be part of the success of it, albeit my little tiny contribution. But okay. I am always available. I can do. I love the Saturday night specials. I love to be part of it. So. Maybe maybe I can get a Griff to send me the clip of all time and. See if he can't send me the clip of the intro song, the, the new intro song where where yeah. they mention 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 Kathy Godsey and <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. I love it. And I then, think the, and then they do the entries intros uh, the exit. <laughs> Happy trails to you. I know. Well, you have to do that. You know, keep, I'm still trying to get my daughters to watch the podcast. I have three daughters. Token. It says, keep token until I saw that. <laughs> I, I saw that. I love it. I love it. But a lot of my friends are watching the podcast. Like I was just saying, my three daughters will not, I, I can't get them to watch it. They's like, wow, we don't have enough time to watch that podcast, but <laughs> they know about it. <laughs> I said, your mom is kind of cool, you know, you know <laughs> kind of cool a little bit. So anyway, but it's always a lot of fun, and I'm so glad to be a part of this. And um, I know that a lot of people are going to be enjoy enjoy watching this tonight. You know, it's a lot of fun. So yeah, I enjoy doing it. You know, and it's you know, I I I feel kind of privileged or whatever. 
that you know i'm the one that's um here and um uh, uh qualified i guess to to do this you know i so many people are interested in leonard skinner it's just amazing it's been almost uh, they only existed for really four years and 50 years later people still want to know about leonard skinner and everything and then it's kind of kind of neat that you know i'm one of the only ones that's around that really can tell the you know what really happened because there's so many right. you know so if somebody hears a story and by, by the time it gets back to reality the story has changed quite a bit you know so i try to try to keep everything you know the way it happened you know and you know like like everybody says I, i'm not in here to bash anybody every all those guys were all great to me. I don't have any bones to pick with anybody in that whole thing, except, you know, like I said, for the, the management and everybody involved, you know, to really just drop the ball as far as having enough insurance and everything to take care of everybody on the plane. And it's, it's really a pity that they, that they kind of destroy, they, not kind of destroyed, destroyed people's lives, having them on that plane. And then, yeah. and then, and then just, you know, once they got out of the hospital and went home, that was it. I mean, that's all the help they ever got. And they're still paying their own hospital bills and that sucks. Yeah. Now, luckily I wasn't hurt that bad, you know? Well, but, you were, you were hurt that bad. Well, I was hurt pretty but bad. You... I'm, I mean, I'm suffering from it now. Like I said, yeah. you know, I'm I'm not getting around like like Ricky, you know, and you know, and he, you know, he wasn't all, you know, I was mangled up pretty good in that plane. This affected me, and it it, it has affected my head. I don't know, you know. They told me I was going to have a, a brain injury, but you know, I get along okay. But I don't know. I don't remember what I used to be like. It's hard to. Yeah, it's hard of course. To, speculate what you used to know you don't you know you can't you can't uh rationalize you know what who, who did i used to be you know and people say oh you haven't changed you know but they say some people can get a severe head injury and you really can't really doesn't show you know but i'm not saying i was ever any smarter than i was now or whatever but I might have been. I don't know. <laughs> well, it was 46 years ago. I don't remember things 46 years ago in my life. The fact that you can recall all of this is amazing. I mean, my goodness, you know, you have an amazing memory and, and you know, to detail and things that happen. So God bless you. Oh, well, God, know, if you knew how many different. blackouts I'd have in my life from, yeah. from living that lifestyle that has killed yeah. so many of us, you know, I mean. Right. Luckily, my genetics are pretty good that I've, I was able not to have it affect my health like it did some of the others, I guess, because I was right in there with the rest of them, you know? Yeah. You know, yep. Gary was pretty bad, though. I mean, you know, I couldn't do the amount of drugs Gary or Alan did. They were, hmm. you know, it was, uh, I'm not talking bad about them. They did a lot of drugs, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's just... Yep. just the way it is you know? and leon and billy all of them you know except for ricky and artemis and they're still here yeah. <laughs> you know so there you go yeah you know? they look good they look good yeah. ricky and artemis they yeah. do and people that stuff think they can do that stuff and it, it won't catch up to them you know trust me one of these days it's gonna catch up to you and when it does and uh it's too late you know and yeah. the cigarette smoking. Oh, the cigarette God, smoking. So oh, God. I'm talking to some lady right now that's a friend yeah. of Griff's. And then she just started talking to me. And I feel so bad for her. She's 55 years old. And she's got severe COPD. She lives in a nursing home. And that's her life. And she said the nursing home takes all her money. Oh, God. She, she's, and I, I talked to her. You know, I feel, you know, I'm, I feel, you know. Like I want to be her friend because I'm, you know, she, you know, there's, you know, once you go into places like that, people kind of forget about you. They you forget know? about you, right? You know, right. I, I, you know, it's, 
even then, even though she did it to herself, I still feel bad for her. I mean, she's 55 years old. She's a nice lady, you know, and she, you know, I said, I asked what I asked her. She, I said, did you smoke? And she goes, severely, you know. Oh, God. You know, Horrible. so, I mean, yeah. she, she's dreading it now, but. God, I've told, I've tried to tell so many people, you know, to quit smoking. Ah, you know, you know. But, you know, a lot of people that I tried to get to quit, now they've got COPD and they wish they'd have listened to me, but hindsight is twenty twenty. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that, cigarette smoking and, and dieting are the hardest things. Oh, you know? yeah. It's and the hardest thing to give up, you know? The food, the food that they feed people these days is... I mean, it's, you know, everybody's, all the politicians are in bed with the food manufacturers and they're just making stuff. They're making stuff to make people sick so they have to take medicine to cure them. It's just a vicious circle. I mean, this yeah. is just so corrupt anymore. It's just pathetic. If you do, if you don't have a little common sense and are able to see things in your own eyes, you're you're, you know, you're just a target, you know? Yeah. So yeah. much corruption. Every time you turn around, somebody's trying to do something. It's, uh... <laughs> I heard a, I heard a talk show, a radio uh, talk show um, host the other day saying two thirds of America is overweight. Two thirds of America. I mean, that's a big oh, yeah. percentage. And they're, and they're trying to say it's one, oh, oh, uh, three out of 10 there are overweight. <laughs> Wow. It's like eight yeah. out of ten, you know. Yeah. You know. I went to see a, a local play, a town a high school performance the other night, and you know they always have the dancers. I can't tell you how many of these young teenagers are like fat. I hate to use that word, but they were really fat. The dancers in the play. I mean, young kids. It's I think the dancers would be thin, but no, they they were not. They were fat, and I felt bad for them. I just. You know? Watch the thing I think I posted about the government just said that those Lunchables are now considered health food and they're putting them in, God. in, in, in schools and it's all processed bullshit. I oh, mean, that's it's junk. Yeah. Not even fit for to eat. And they're, they're saying it's healthy in schools. Oh God. Uh, but it's, it's it's ridiculous and they're loaded with sodium at the very least the amount of sodium then that, that's oh, processed in anything that's processed is good. yeah i mean it's you know right. it's a shame it is so well you've you you know hopefully you'll you'll make a difference in somebody's life that watches this i know at least two of your uh watchers your viewers oh are god there's you know, at least two, but maybe there's other a, people. There's a couple, I've, I've, there's a couple dozen people that I have that, 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 Good. that even my friend, Sammy, you know, Sammy was kind of, you know, I don't need you know, him, but he, he, he's finally come around. He, he, he's been on the stone roadie. He went on some kind of meat thing, you know, that was his thing, but he's, he's lost 15 pounds and he's, He's going, I feel so much better. Good for him. And not only that, his attitude, not only does he feel better physically, his attitude is like he likes himself better. You know, mm. it's like it's like weird. Once you start coming around, you start liking yourself again. Yeah. Because you and you like you like the way you look in clothes, which is yeah, nice. You You're like more clothes your, I mean, it's, from. Uh, yeah. It's it must suck not to, to go around and not like yourself, you know. I yeah. mean, I wish I was something else, you know. Well, do it. Don't just like think about it, you know. Don't just wish it. You want to lose weight, lose the damn weight, man. I mean, you know, uh, nothing. No food tastes as good as skinny feels. I mean, you know, and if, and I and I'm sorry if you don't agree with me, but if 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 you're 50 60 100 however much you are overweight that's that's how much you don't like yourself as far as i'm concerned you know i mean you know people that say stuff about me and they're extremely overweight you think i really care you don't even like yourself you know i think i care what you think about me and i'm sorry that's the way i feel but that's the way i feel 
So anyways, are we done with this edition of the Stone Roadie Show for <laughs> this week? Except that you have to sing. My favorite before, part is this. <laughs> before we have people reaching for the bow. Turn this guy off before he... <laughs> 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 I think you got kind of a health expert, you know. Well, well, you said to me, you said, "Do you have anything to talk about?" I said, "We always have stuff to talk about." <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> so, anyways, yeah. So, if we ain't got nothing to talk about, you know. I'm gonna start mm -hmm. singing. Happy trails to you. <laughs> Until we meet again, happy trails to you. Keep token until then. <laughs> and we'll see you next week <laughs> or next couple days or whatever, right here on the Stone Roadie Show. Today's <laughs> host was my the Stone Roadie Craig Reed, and back from a short <laughs> three weeks ago <laughs> vacation or whatever it's been. Uh, the lovely Kathy Godsey, who's done twenty percent of the Stone Roadie Show, and. Don't forget to like and subscribe <laughs> and help support the survivors of the Leonard Skinner airplane crash who are still suffering. That's right. And keep sending those questions. Questions, yes. comments, likes. All right, we <laughs> want to hear them. <laughs> yeah. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. <laughs> and I'm sorry that we've monetized now and you've got commercials and I don't know how many commercials we've got on this thing during this two hour podcast or whatever it's been. But uh for like three hours. How long have we yeah, been? On just that? uh you know, when they come back on, just skip them or you know, yeah. put another machine on another room and just let them run and then we can and then we can get paid for some of these, and then we can give the proceeds to the the survivors of the litter skinner airplane crash. Not me, like Leslie and mm. and, uh, and uh, Mark Frank and Mark Howard and uh, right, right people who are suffering. That's right. Yeah, people definitely, still, definitely still paying for this tragedy that we went through. So. All righty then, uh, looky here, looky here. That's been episode 65 of the Stone Roadie Show. And um, yeah, we're not going to edit anything or nothing, so you're just going to have to bear <laughs> Watch with me while I, <laughs> while I finalize here. And all right, Miss Gazi, say goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Bye-bye. See you next time on the Stone Roadie Show. Roadie Show.